There will be bourbon returns. Uh, and I really don't understand why I keep saying there will be bourbon returns because clearly you understand that because if there's another episode, then we've fucking returned. Um, so sorry, boys, for the stupid intro at this point. Like yeah. Uh, but tonight I am joined via Zoom for a Gain Train Reunion 2.0 that we still haven't managed to pull off. It's been five COVID. years since we did the first, whatever, <laughs> COVID, since we did the first Gain Train Reunion at Tim's Thunderdome in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And that's who's going to join me tonight. And we'll get into the story of why these two gentlemen are gracing your screen or your speakers if you're not watching on YouTube and you're just listening through your standard podcast device. But joining me tonight is the Gain Train OIC Once Upon a Tom time, Rob Thornton. How are you, sir? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Did I had to slam that. So uh, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing pretty good in about... Uh, Three minutes, four minutes. Three minutes. All right. Time checks. Three yeah. minutes. All right. Keep track of that. And then joining him with me below on the screen is the old game train XO, the BDA, the big dumb animal, Tim Manch. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you, man? I am fucking great. All right. So a little bit about these boys. Once upon a time, no shit. There we were. Camp Arif, John, Kuwait, the most austere environment to be deployed in, I would say, right? Yeah. Okay, oh, let's man. Go <laughs> this ran out. Oh, man. Yeah. So yeah, there we are. It was clearly roughing it in uh, Camp Arif, John, Kuwait. One March day. Well, at least that's when I met Rob. I think I met Tim a little later. Oh. Um, yeah. But there we were in CrossFit Arif, John, the three of us nerds became unified through the gifts of CrossFit. And I remember specifically where I met Rob because I was planning on doing exactly what I did. I was just going to go there and work out multiple times a day because I had nothing else to fucking do. I was tunes are not doing anything you guys actually had real responsibilities i did not um so there i was going to get a post-workout i think what was it dairy queen or whatever that what's there i don't know they had the baskin robbins there that's yeah, what right? it was baskin robbins yeah. so i was there getting that and then rob comes up to me and said something to the effect of like hey man you want to coach I'm like all right something and that's kind of how I, I i met rob because rob's way more personable than me may have came from his uh, probably his need to be personable due to his position but yeah, we uh, got rid of that we got rid of that after <laughs> retirement we got rid of that and so if you don't know rob was a guy who flies things in the sky retired as you were major retired uh yep yeah, uh, i retired as a major uh i flew medical evacuation uh flew blackhawks uh has some sounds time important. yeah no not really I don't know the important oh, stuff why? when I was a warrant officer. I, say, I flew right. Hughes for a while. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> for a while. Just a little bit. And then, okay, so we'll, we'll get back to, I don't want to cut that off because that is important, I think. And it's, it's, it's a big part of who you are and what you do today. Yeah, well, fine. It won't be then. Uh, but, <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, we met, or I met Tim. I think Rob already knew Tim. Tim came to us from the great state of the Indiana National Guard. And he was a... Uh, a very strong, fit individual, which not much has changed. Don't, don't, don't bullshit. I remember the first time I showed up, I still had, I mean, I have a FUPA now. I've always had a FUPA, right? But I, I rolled in. You guys are Because yeah. I rolled in and I was just super fat because I hadn't worked out through all like Primo. And I showed up and I was like, uh, actually, I have an L1 so I can coach. <laughs> and she literally just did one of these. She was like, She's like, really? <laughs> Do you know how I met Tim? I went to, I, went, I met Tim at a class. And I never forget this workout. It was like, it was shoulder to overheads and pull-ups, right? Oh, that should be hard for Tim. And I, right. And I'm across the rig from Tim and it was like, you know, 10 reps and 10 reps. And I see Tim put on, you know, of course, like RX plus RX weights, like 95. Tim throws on like 135, right? He's just like, oh yeah, you know, I'm kind of big. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, there's no way this guy could do pull-ups. <laughs> right <laughs> i was like i wanted to read i just wanted to go like hey uh they got they got the bands over there if you want to you know uh, right so wait and real quick tim, for, like hold on for reference tim how much did you weigh at the time probably 250 yeah that was yeah. pre-skinny tim yeah, yeah. <laughs> pre-skinny tim <laughs> That's, all right 250 That's so there he goes. go ahead and so he goes like he goes unbroken on the, the shoulder to overhead hops up on the pull-up bar and starts butterflying pull-ups. I'm like, what kind of physical monstrosity is this thing? <laughs> like, 
like with the grace of a butterfly, right? He's just like cycling through his pull-ups. And uh, then, you know, I remember looking across, I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go round for round with this guy with, of course, like half the weight that he's doing. It's all and uh, yeah, man, <laughs> and I think we just, we started talking after that, that uh, class, you know, we just kind of struck up a friendship there. Yeah, yeah. it was always kind of weird because I think I, I probably had a similar kind of internalized discussion with watching Tim do what he did. Not that <laughs> workout. It was just whatever came after because I could tell that he was a very strong guy, right? And then we learned to find out that w- what what did you do in, in college? What position did you play for football? I was an offensive guard. He was an offensive lineman, okay? So this is what I wanted people to understand. Tim was a college football player. <laughs> And what were you running your two miles in by the time you left? Oh, that's so stupid. It was, I knew it was that because I was like, I was the 13th, 13th engineers. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. It, so this is where, this is what really bothered me. All right. Cause I, the, of everything I've ever been able to do in the army, I've never maxed a PT test. I've gotten 299 twice back to back when I was a drill sergeant and I could never max the run. I would always run like a 1320. That's like the fastest I ever ran. And that was when I was 180 pounds. And then this, as Rob affectionately calls him, big dumb animal, who's literally like we're the same height, right? Who started that? First of all, I don't know. It couldn't have been me. Was it me? Was it me? <laughs> all right, I'm taking credit then. Well, I don't get it because we're the same height, like five eleven, six foot ish, right? I claim six foot. Who cares what everyone else says? And then this fucker's like literally fifty pounds heavier, and he runs two miles faster than most people in the army, let alone people his size or my size. I'm talking like it's just he's... it's just scary thinking about Tim yeah. running two miles on a 13 and 13. Well, and you then know? let's go back to the football thing, right? Because I was having this discussion with uh one of my best friend's husbands over Christmas. Um, because he played football at Colorado State and we're watching an Eagles game. And like Jason Kelsey's brother's the center, I think, for the Eagles. That dude's 6'3, 300 and ran a 4740 at the combine. That's yeah, fucking that's dumb. That's, that's insane, 60 man. pounds bigger than Tim. <laughs> so yeah, I bring all that up because there's always those dudes who are like, oh, you can't do shit. I'm like, bro, you need to learn the difference between the average gym goer and an elite athlete. And uh, you need to understand what you get yourself into. Now, Tim's, you know, we can say this because it's all in love. Tim's not quite elite, but he's pretty fucking close. He's closer than we are. <laughs> hey, look, skinny, look, I'm going to put it up. Skinny Tim, skinny Tim. And we talked about it in there, John. Skinny yeah. Tim he could have made was... It was was right there man i'm saying he's he's a regionals qualifier man 220 mm-hmm. right when you left 215 I'm, I'm telling you skinny skinny tim the why the what what he did to people during the murph I uh, mean, that oh was, that's my oh favorite my hold God, on all right so i gotta tell insane. this this is my favorite story about tim that's and insane. i will never forget this shit yeah first yeah. off the, everyone the check out murph man check out the old crossfit air john shirt the original the og shirt if you have it. it used to fit me so that's what it was tim I, 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 and a baby gap shirt. <laughs> no it is a fucking baby gap shirt now i'm weighing 250 it seems like anyway so that was really my first experience with tim okay so for those of you who don't know what the murph is you probably do by now because it's it's hugely commercialized and very well known throughout military culture and crossfit culture at this point but it's essentially you go run a mile in a fucking weight vest. And what we had were what the, the IOTV gen three yeah. with, with IOTVs. And By I think the way, we Tim weighed him get his right? below 25 pounds. Yeah. Like the, the large or the extra large, whatever Tim was wearing was probably 30 to 35 pounds that day. Uh, and you, so you, you do, you run a mile with that. Then you come back. It looked and like a, an apron. It looked like a Kevlar <laughs> apron on you. Yeah. And then you do a hundred pull-ups, 200 pushups, 300, uh, air squats. And this was before people figured out you could partition this shit. They didn't do that. Yeah. You just did it. And then you went and ran another mile. And on top of that, we're doing this in Kuwait. And I think on that day it was 116 degrees or something. Yeah. It was, like it was, stu- it was stupid hot. And they're it's like, Oh, it's a dry heat. heat. It's dry yeah. heat. Yeah. So whatever. here's the best part about that workout, right? So not only does Tim win that, they do that workout at the CrossFit games that year. And Tim's time would have been like 10th. Yeah. Which it is true. Now here's the best part. Tim beat me by 31 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and dude. he saluted the flag. No, he saluted retreat. Remember that? Remember that? Like, we're win. standing at the <laughs> door. We're standing at the door, right? And they're like, I'm looking at my watch and I'm going, dude, they're going to sound retreat here any minute. And we start running, right? And then, like, off goes retreat. And Tim's like, 
And everybody's <laughs> watching this like, Tim, you don't have to just run. You don't have to, blah, blah, blah. Everybody else is running. Tim's standing there and it's like fucking metal apron, you know, like <laughs> metal apron. Right. And then he finishes, right? He's the last dude in the gym. He's the last dude in the gym. And after the body weight exercises, he's the first big dome animal running out of the gym. Like, oh, I'm just going to go do my second mile. See you later, guys. Yeah, it really made no sense. You know who really? loved that shit with those Marines that were in there? Those guys lost. Oh, yeah. Him. They turned into like, oh, my gosh. Jumping around and just screaming. Like, yeah, yeah like they, were, they were the, uh, they were the, the dude, like, they were the definition they were of a no rep. Like, they, they, they embodied they hammered, the dude. spirit of the no rep. Yeah. I totally think they were hammered because, like, I think it was their gun. He was running around like he didn't even trade for this. Like, yeah, really? there's some weird tell. people that came in and out of that gym in transit. Yeah. So anyway, that's but how that, it started. We all ended part, up though. coaching at some point at CrossFit. Yeah. John, you guys way more than I did. I was just I you really were so reluctant, it. dude. I just <laughs> like, <laughs> just wanted you to know work why. Out. Do you remember? Do you remember um, Old Man Aaron's? Because yeah. you and him got in a fight. I remember oh, that. Dude, I ran into that guy like three years. I told you guys, right? I ran into him at Fort Knox when I was at the school. Yeah. yeah. Really? And we, and we like, we almost made up in a way. It was weird. Oh, oh yeah. Because you weren't like, hug it out. Yeah. Yeah. What was, I don't, I don't know what, the, what it was. It was some stupid, sh- like, I remember this really well. It was just because I knew both of you, right? And I saw him all the time and I saw you all the time, but never together for obvious reasons. And like, <laughs> You had a class and you were doing something about cleaning and you were like, hey, full grip. And he was just like, no, nah, Marius, don't do that. And you're like, that's funny because everybody else here does. So I literally <laughs> stopped and pointed at everybody else. And you know, about it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was classic like, Eric. Like, like, fucking hang on that Eric guy. Yeah, you- <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, you know, I mean, Honestly, Eric out of that invented t- resting male bitch face before there was resting male bitch face. There was, was it was like I mean, to be fair, that was the tour where my my platoon leader told me that Sarnsky, you 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 lack empathy. That's what she <laughs> told me. And I refuse to believe that. I've Surprise that, face. Like it's not that I lack empathy, ma'am. It's I've just heard enough bullshit over the years to know that when people are lying. Yeah. That's all. I mean, and, and that's where you hear it all the time, right? But we heard that. Every single unit that came through that gym, right? There's always like that guy, like, oh, you know, my knees, I can't squat full depth. <laughs> like, oh, I got like a shoulder injury, can't lock yeah. out. So you can go to the bathroom though, right? Do you, do you squat full depth when you sit down on the toilet or no? No, you don't do that. <laughs> you just stand, you hover. <laughs> but, I mean, but you know, that like old you get school in your car and drive, like, right? You do that. Well, like old school CrossFit, that was the thing. It was like, you know, like, oh, okay, you've done CrossFit for six years. Cool. Let me see your air squat. Whoa. <laughs> Coaching was, well, yeah. Remember like the on-ramp class? Like you yeah. would do like once a week or something or yeah. once a month. Yeah. I don't know. That yeah. was fun to hang out and watch Tim do the overhead squat and tell his overhead squat story. Yeah, because I wasn't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so to get back to the fact that literally the strongest person I've ever worked out with consistently, not being able you- to do an overhead squat with the bar, I always thought that story was great because it's, it's not really strength at that point. That's just all flexibility. Right, which I don't have any. I definitely don't have any more. <laughs> do you? Do you? Do you? Were you there when Tim did the the powerlifting meet for his unit? Yeah, and some. Yeah, some. And he, like, oh, oh, yeah. that was great. So they are. Right, and he did look at four hundred five cold. It wasn't uh, four hundred five. It was five hundred. Yeah, it was like it was yeah, five hundred. Yeah, it was five hundred because no one in the company that he was doing it for could hit five hundred, and they started like, goading this BDA like, from behind the desk who was clearly not trying to participate because it, it wanted like to be cargo fair. shorts and running shoes. Yeah, it's like, oh, you want me to lift five hundred? Okay, not only he didn't just do it; he did it twice. He did two yeah. reps. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I might have been wearing bear traps or Crocs or something. Probably, <laughs> but that's yeah. probably where the BDA came from. I'm sure it originated mm-hmm. from that. Well, I had oh, Rob way before I'm that. Rob helped me coach that one. That was a lot of fun because, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that brings back a lot of weird memories because yeah. guys like that counts right, and they do like that half bench thing where it's like, yeah, it's like floating in there, and they look at you like, is that good? This is good, right? I do remember like you guys smacking off their chest, that, like pow. You had that <laughs> yeah. female deadlifting that made me leave. Like I not. She didn't make me leave, but watching her made me leave because I didn't want to be a part of like the safety violation that was going on. Yeah. Like she yeah. was the first one where I legitimately was like, that's she's gonna get hurt. Cause her spine was like straight. It was like a an arch. You wanna know something interesting about, about her? She's a doctor. 
she finished her doctorate. Like you would think of all not people who know biomedical stuff, a medical doctor would, but. Not surprised. Like, I mean, think about how many so doctors and nurses this, smoke cigarettes, talking about right? Anyway, like, right? oh yeah, smoking's bad for you. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Well, doctors were probably oh. the most unhealthy. There's a huge section of doctors that still think exercise is bad for you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't, don't, don't work out too hard. That's bad. I mean, do, do you, so my brother, like, I've seen so much of this and I, I, mean, I know you guys do the same as me. If you ever go see a doctor, you, you know, take with a grain of salt. Like my, my oldest brother had neck surgery and they were like, you know, or he was going to have neck surgery, excuse me. And he was like, well, I was scared off it because his mom, he's my half brother, his mom had neck surgery. And he's like, she was supposed to be laid up for six days or something. It turned into six months. And I'm like, well, did she do anything like, you know, recovery or any kind of strengthening or all that? And, no. And then, um, and my, you know, my wife, after she had our kids, right, the doctor is just like, well, you should never, ever, 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 ever do a sit up ever again, ever. And it's like, uh, what? Like, what, yeah. what kind of advice is that? Oh my gosh, that's scary. It, it is weird oh. though. Uh, uh, hold on, because I'm doing this all dicked up and I'm going to blame the two of you since, you know, I don't want to accept <laughs> responsibilities tonight. Anyway, um, so tonight I will be fueled by the great Wyoming whiskey. All right. And so for those who don't know what Wyoming whiskey is, what they actually do that's really cool because there's a ton of craft distillers that have popped up. Wyoming whiskey does one of the things most small craft distillers don't do is they actually use the standard 53 gallon barrel. And they age theirs for a minimum of five years. And it's also weeded, which means the secondary grain in their bourbon is wheat, much like a maker's mark. Or if you get into the Weller line of Buffalo Trace or the Pappy Van Winkles that everyone goes nuts about, those are weeded bourbons. That's what this is. Uh, so what most craft distillers do is they'll use a smaller barrel, usually 30 to 35 gallons, because they feel like it helps age it quicker, which it really doesn't. Like The only thing that's going to make bourbon age good is uh, good old-fashioned time. Right. So anyway, Wyoming whiskey. That's what I got tonight. I know Rob slammed some Woodford Reserve. Is that what that was? There you go. Some good old Brown Foreman. Great to still. Hey, it was on there. sale, man. Like it was on sale at the local grocery store. What am I gonna do? I don't. I don't even know if that's a good thing to tell us. It, it's kind of a shame, but <laughs> I, I yeah, drink. It's good. Brown. Foreman. I drink literally. The last time I drank was on Memorial Day last year. I don't drink very much. I, I, I literally went a seven year period where I didn't drink alcohol. So if I didn't, I'd probably look like I did when I left. Uh, I might have abs still, but I don't because I, I don't do yeah. what you do. Hey. And then Tim, what, what you say, you got a little wild Turkey action tonight. What do we, I was gonna say, big skinny is, is severely overrated. So I keep, I keep this in supply because I got a four. <laughs> That's nice. a great one. I tell you, Wild Turkey 101, by far the best bang for your buck in terms of uh, availability, proof, age, taste. It's classic. It's good shit. Twenty five ninety nine around my corner. Twenty five? <laughs> Fuck! I got that shit at the base. Really? The for sixteen. I think the Coast Guarders are fucking. They're hiding that shit. They, nah, I'm in Chirac. Everything's inflated. Like on sale, the Woodford was like thirty two bucks. Yeah, that's a, that's so high. Like wild yeah. turkey usually around here in these parts is probably between seventeen and twenty two. But I'm surprised because oh. Indiana, with MGP right there and, and the amount of production they do, I'm just surprised how different states' prices are. Yeah, I don't understand. So I like, and you've seen this right because you've been MGP, didn't you go there? I did not. I wanted to. I didn't get a chance to. I don't even know if they do tours, but I, it's on the list. It's it's so um, uh, what's the word saturated around here? So we. Uh, we got a camper last year and we stored up the road by 20 minutes away, right? There's yeah. literally a distillery next door. So I'll get you guys some. It's called, uh, what is it, uh, Bear Hollow or something like that? Is it, sourced from, huh? is it sourced from MGP? Or do they? Make uh, it? I don't know. It could be. I know who is. Um, the uh, shit, they just, so Brown County, Indiana is right just to the west of us, right? And Brown County is like a nice country area. It's wooded. There's a big state forest over there. And there's a bunch of distilleries and, and uh, there's a town called Nashville that's like, um, it's kind of like a low rent Gatlinburg. I don't know. It's not quite that. <laughs> that's that kind of idea, right? It's like, yeah, I got it. Ice cream fudge and theaters. That's um, all you need, really. And alcohol, yeah. But uh, <laughs> R-Truth Hills is, uh, R-Truth is like a, a new big thing in Indiana. They got a whole variety of stuff. I think they get MGP. And so they, because they have that infrastructure plan of MGP, they, uh, in a matter of months open like a 300,000 square foot thing out in the woods to tasting facility, awesome. auditorium. That's, awesome. that's all I want. It's, it's right. All out I want. Yeah. 
So for those who don't know what the hell MGP is, I've said it enough, but if you don't remember, it's uh, Midwest, Midwest grain producers. They just basically mass produce bourbon and whiskey. And there's been rumors for years that they were going to start making their own labels. I don't know if they are yet. They may still be aging it. But what they do is they make this stuff in bulk. And if you're a new distillery who pops up and you need to get some stuff immediately to sell while time does its thing for your stuff, you go to MGP and you buy it. A lot of people do it. They make some amazing stuff. Really good, really good stuff. Uh, a lot of really good rise come out of MGP. But uh, yeah. I think there's another one that's local around here from MGP that uh, all their stuff is, I mean, it's, it's veterans that own it, but it's all shaped <laughs> yeah. like kidney flasks, like old, old canteens. Yeah. Uh, like canteens and it's like that's vodka cool. ready to drink. Or ready that's to drink. cool. Have ready you guys to- had the horse soldier stuff that they, they came up with? last year around i think they're really, horse soldiers really good but it's sourced from mgp but they made some really good stuff they made a like a small batch it's, i don't know if it was a single barrel but they also made a barrel proof that's the only one i haven't had and that's what i really like i like stuff that's barrel proof or as close to it as you can get the higher the proof the better uh, in my opinion which is why wild turkey 101 so great rob you writing all this down i know this is super exciting no nah, man like <laughs> you know tim tim dropped by and i i had bought what was it like Dickel? Dickel, yeah. Yeah, I brought some Dickel and we had some of that when he came to visit. And then last Memorial Day, I had some uh, single barrel rye. And uh, like we we were over, yeah, we were over at a neighbor's house, you know, and and, um, we just started pouring some rye. And I was like, I only drink on like Memorial Day and Labor Day. So here we go. And I'm impressed that you can do that. It's like being deployed literally all year round. I can't. Well, I mean, originally it didn't, it didn't start out that way. Like I came back from a deployment and I got stationed in Yakima where we were doing, um, you know, medevac duty for the, uh, the training installation. So you can't, right. Drink, basically. So I, I like, if we got to a point where we were so short on personnel, like I was day on day off, I couldn't drink, you know, no fun. Yeah. And, and by the time I left there, it had been like five years since I had a drink. So there was, there was no point at that. That's crazy. Like, oh, That's yeah. Crazy. yeah. It really yeah. is crazy. All right. So let me, let me, let me try and steer this into that. Cause I want, I want people to understand a little bit about what Rob has done and, and Tim, we'll get to you as well. Um, I'm not proceed with Rob. Oh, we're, we're definitely coming to, I, I want to know if you ever got that track built around the gym in Camp Aerotown yet, but anyway, we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> so you Rob, how did you end up becoming a pilot? So how did you get wow. into the army? Like, cause you joined pre nine 11, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. how, yeah. That, so those that have ever worked with me knows that I refer to this as the retard route. Okay. <laughs> Potato. Potato. Um, He's yeah. retired. So, he can say whatever the fuck he wants now. Uh, <laughs> great. No, no, no. Like somebody reminded me the other day. They're like, no, if you're within five years, you know, you see them, Jay, they can recall you and like hammer your butt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Who knows? In today's, um, it's probably true. Who knows? Whatever. No, like I enlisted in 99. I, I worked in psychological operations at Fort Bragg. I mean, like it sounds cool, but we were like the redheaded stepchildren of special operations. You know, you still are. Yeah. It's like, hey, we need a tasking. Oh, 112 signal. Oh, no, the side up guys. Grab the speaker guys. Give them a tasking. You know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, while like, Green Berets are out saving the world, and you know they're like, "Oh, we need someone to do post police call." You know, uh, <laughs> so I did that for my first four years. I put in a warrant packet, and I went to warrant officer flight school. Uh, I did six years as a warrant officer. All of it was uh, in medical evacuation. Uh, that's where I did uh, two of my tours to Iraq, uh, and then um, I direct commissioned. Uh, I'm I like, I'm going to blame my wife. Cause she was like, Hey, like that guy gets paid more than you. And he's in charge of you. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You're smarter yeah. than him. I'm like, Fuck that guy. Oh, okay. Well, actually I can do that. <laughs> She's like, you're doing that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I, I went to, uh, a direct commissioning program that the AMED has where they take warrant officers that, you know, want to get paid more in retirement. And then they like send them to, uh, AMED OCS, which is interesting um and uh you like to come out and then you know i had to do like 21 months as a butter bar which you know tim you're familiar (laughs) and then uh i you know uh, i i did uh my commission time as all all as as a medevac pilot A a lot of other guys like do other things like you could go be a healthcare administrator you could go do all these other things i just did pilot stuff and then uh 
I retired. So did you I was, when we were deployed, when you were the cash commander, did you fly it all then? You had to keep up on hours, didn't no, you? No, no, man. That's like a whole different story. Worm, so sorry. I mean, so I, I had worked, so I was stationed at Fort Polk and I had finished up working a year as a captain as a battalion XL because you know it's a TDA unit, like there's not enough people for your TDA unit. And I knew the battalion commander. He was a mentor of mine, fan, like fantastic leader, great leader. Um, and he was like, Rob, you're going to be my XL. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I'll follow you into the gates of hell. And, and, <laughs> and then it was for an entire year, it was hell. <laughs> um, and then I, that basically screwed me over because I, I contacted my branch manager and I was like, hey, I need another job. I've been here for a year. I want to kill myself. I need to go. <laughs> uh and he was like well where do you want to go i was like i'd really like to go to fort lewis that would be really cool be close to my family no no the army's got other plans for you uh so i went job shopping um on fort polk yeah. uh you know like fort polk is another story and it's like that's you know you need to have like a whole segment about that the people 50 percent of the people that are there are very solid individuals because they're making up for the slack of the other 50 percent. so i'm just That's gonna leave the with that. army period so like it might I, be a little I, higher at this point so i interviewed for a couple of jobs on fort polk and and the, the installation hospital commander was like yeah rob i have jobs for you you don't want them trust me i'm like okay i'm gonna go to another place um so i interviewed Did you want at that the, guy? Uh, was that yeah yeah like literally I believe he probably did that shit. He probably did. He's <laughs> fucking so awkward. <laughs> so I went down to the uh, combat support hospital, interviewed with a the commander there, and I was like, hey, I just need a job. I'm trying to get to Fort Lewis. I just need a job for like 12 months. And uh, the dude at the time was like, no, I need a commander because the last three that got you know sent here were had uh, what they had like referred OERs and they, they were dirt bags. So I need a commander for 20 months. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Like I'll be a company commander. I had no clue what I was getting into. Like none, you know, this was a, yeah, this was, it was, it was crazy. So I, I literally, I went back. I remember I went back and I talked to my mentor, uh, who was the battalion commander. I was like, Hey, I got offered this job. Should I take it? And he's like, yeah, it's good. You should learn how the other half lives. I'm like, God, this is great. (laughs) But honestly, it was, it was, it was really rewarding. Like I had, I mean, I went to that company. I was a pilot. I knew nothing about what it being, what a hospital commander was. So I remember I sat down the training NCO and the first sergeant, both like outstanding NCOs. Right. And I looked at them and I was like, I know how to do supply and admin. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I cannot screw that up. I'm going to leave all the training to you guys. You just let me know what you need to do. Like I will help you get it done. I'll just try to not screw up the paperwork and try to not lose any shit. So I did like six. Yeah, I did six (laughs) different inventories. Didn't lose a damn thing. Uh, And probably screwed up a bunch of awards. But like, I don't know. I mean, by all measures, it was successful. And uh, I just, I I had a lot of good soldiers. Like a lot of really good soldiers. You know, it was was a lot of fun. Like you, you're so you're you were in the same boat I'm in now, right? And I'm curious because you had a command after that when you went to. Yeah, I got I got my medevac command. I went to Fort Benning and commanded the uh, the medevac detachment there, which which supported uh, like Ranger Battalion, so yeah. in Fort Benning and everything there. Being that an aviator nice. in infantry land, ooh, that's a lot of fun. To call you a lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I I mean, well, before you do Benning, let's. If you don't mind, do you mind going back to, yeah. All right. So let's do, what years did you go to Iraq? You say you did two tours in Iraq? Yeah. So first two in Iraq, I think was like, oh, three to oh, four and a half because we got extended. Hey, you're in the same boat as me. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, man. Was that awesome? No, no, (laughs) no, it was not. I like, I have a lot of traumatic experiences in the army, but sitting there and being told by some fat, oh something that i was gonna go back to iraq when our helicopters already had custom stickers on it (laughs) that's pretty bad that's almost as bad probably yeah mine was more of well this is like so this was the third (laughs) extension and it did over so 
I don't know if you remember, because I know you were an aviator, but when you convoyed out of Iraq, you had a few stops along the way before you got back into Kuwait. You had Camp Cedar, you had Camp Cedar 2. These are like all little ref, like last minute stops, right? Fuel up, go over. And when we made it down to Camp Cedar 2, we had just gone through Nazaria. We'd gone through all this shit. And Nazaria was the big one. We, we had an MP battalion that was our escort. And they were redeploying as well. And I still remember the battalion commander when we got to Camp Cedar 2. It was supposed to be a short hop. We were supposed to be there overnight, fuel up, go finish the rest of the way into Kuwait. Yeah. Five days later, when none of us, I'm, you know, it's, it's little E4 me. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? We've already been extended 18 fucking times. It felt like we're on our 15th month. And I remember he pulls us all, gets the whole fucking battalion of vehicles, the MPs, all this stuff. There's like, we're all out there listening to him. He hops on top of a fucking Humvee to, so he could address everyone. Because this was, this was before you would just send a mass text, right? And just tell everybody. <laughs> uh, and What's then he's happening? like, so Nazaria, if you remember, uh, Muqtada al-Sadr, who's like literally the guy running Iraq at this point right now. Well, he had fucking Sadr's army going on. And he was a huge problem for the United States government and the coalition authority and everyone. He was a fucking, he was a dick. But he was about it. He was about General. that. Fucking, yeah, he was about that life. Like he was really like, I will fuck up U.S. soldiers. That's what I'm here to. That's what I'm going to do. And now, ironically, yeah. he's the fucker running the country, or pretty close. But anyway, yeah. the problem with that was all these dudes were from First Armor Division, and the the battalion commander's like, "Hey, we got to go back." And I'll never forget this moment. And uh, she's, I will never tell her name, but I still remember her clear as day because she's. She means well, and she's actually done really well for herself in the military since then, but she was a, a 19-year-old PFC. And when they said, we're going back, they have to convoy back into Baghdad. And they're like, you guys, and they called out our unit specifically, you guys finish on and go home. She jumped up and down like she just won the fucking Super Bowl, while an entire battalion of MPs just got told they got to go convoy <laughs> <back>. <laughs> And I just remember sitting there like, so I'm like, shut the, f shut the fuck up. Everyone's telling her to shut. She's like, yeah, we got home. Like, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Fucking 400 other dudes just got told they got to go oh back. Gosh. And the, iron the irony of that shit is, uh, cause you mentioned Fort Polk about a year, about a year later, it may have been a little less. I was, uh, I went to camp Bogard. You remember that? Camp Bogard. It's near Fort Polk. Sounds familiar. Yeah. The National Guard. Base. I went there for yeah. PODC and one of my instructors was uh, one of those dudes. He had literally just PCS. And he's like, yeah, we got fucked up as soon as we went back to Nazaria. They had a huge ambush, ID and everything. And I'm like, yeah, uh, we, we had, we got split, man. Like we, we literally, the, the, the unit, we had got down to Kuwait. We had, we had washed, they had been through customs inspection. Yes. They shrink wrapped the helicopters. Oh, and, like like they like, oh, yeah, you were and way then, worse like, than us. <laughs> oh man. And we no, no, it was worse because we were <laughs> well, you know the dudes, you heard about the dudes in Alaska, right? Like the dudes in Alaska that like literally they landed in Alaska, got off, and they were like, Oh, by the way, you can't leave the hangar because you're about to go back. Oh like, no, I didn't hear that. That sounds oh like yeah. Oh yeah. No, they no, they, they <laughs> jacked up some dudes, man. That's they jacked funny. up some dudes. Were they 20 feet? I think so. Yeah, like they literally got really home, good. got into like the reception, like, Hey, welcome home. Was They're it like, that same the way, year? You guys can't leave. Was it the same I, year? I, yeah, it was the same year. So then, yeah, it would have been because 25th yeah. guys were there. They yeah. kind of overlapped with first AD. So that makes Cause, sense. Cause we were six days from leaving. We were hanging out in Kuwait, freaking playing volleyball and PTs <laughs> and like hanging out at the Naval base. Like, ha ha ha. We're like, oh, that's great. We're about to go home. The boy. Yeah, and I, and I remember <laughs> someone had opened up an army. To, uh, it was the Stars and Stripes. Somebody had opened up the Stars and Stripes, and it was talking about how we were we were sending people back. We were surging and blah 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 blah. And I think it was one of our crew chiefs was reading. It was like, "Hey, listen to this. It says they're sending a medevac company back. Ha ha ha! It would suck to be them." <laughs> <laughs> Hold my water. What the. Uh, and, and like w1 thornton right like this aunt, <laughs> w1 you know waiting on his w2 promotion like oh please i hope one day they promote me because i'm time in grade anyway um <laughs> i was in our cq tent 
which was like, you know, GP medium with the phone. Like that was it, you know, and you had like the stupid, you know, dry erase board, DA6, like, oh, here's who's pulling, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I answer the phone and they're like, hey, is this the 57th? I'm like, yeah, uh, this is W1 Thornton. Hey, by the way, we, uh, we need an MTP maintenance test pilot down here at the uh, port because we unwrapped all your aircraft and unfolded the blades. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what why'd you do that wait <laughs> what all right so we need the mtp down here by click i'm like what hello hello <laughs> and so i i you know i like grabbed the first oh great i can find them like hey uh the port says they need a maintenance test pilot because they unfolded all the blades and same thing i'm like what they can't do that what and you know six days later <laughs> Right. So when you got back to Eric John and you saw the wash rack that we just described, where did you get, did you have PTSD or anything? Cause I oh, remember driving man, past like, those, those wash racks and like, man, fucking 18 <sighs> hours on a goddamn five, 10, a is, deuce and a half, four hundred. I know this is hilarious, dude. Cause the, the, the O grades out there will still remember this. I know they're not listening, but they told us leave the custom stickers on the damn aircraft. <laughs> they're like, no, we washed them. They were good. Fly that bitch back over the border with the custom sticker on it. <laughs> that's great. There you go. That's that's yeah, okay. So that's significantly more dick. So how much? How many more months did you go back for? I uh, man, I can't even remember. I think that's it was like two fucking, or three more months. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. demoralizing. Well, that's because yeah. I, I mean, if so, my whole thing where I really started to be like, you know, twenty-two year old me is like, hmm, what the fuck's going on? Is when like we're there. Uh, they and like our one of our E7s because they formed this big company out of a bunch of uh reserve platoons. And the one of the guys pulled us all together and he's like, We caught Saddam. And I was like, Sweet, <laughs> I remember that. Fuck I yeah. remember, yeah, I'm I like, remember. great. What was that like December 13th or 14th? Yeah. I'm like, Oh, great, yeah. shit my birthday's in three days. Yeah. I remember somewhere back on Fort Stewart being told, yeah. like, We'll be back before Christmas, yeah. I, I remember like, all that right, crap, shit, dude. fuck yeah. I Caught him before crap. Christmas. Good time. And then, you know, it's New Year's Eve and we get this intel brief like, yeah, we're expecting a battalion-sized element to come through by app. We're going to need everybody out on the OPs and, and everyone needs to be locked and loaded and ready and, and pulling your sectors of fire. I'm like, there was only Why? one question. There was only <laughs> one. Everybody that was in country, everybody that was in country, there was only one question that followed Hey, we caught Saddam. Everybody's like, can we go home? No. <laughs> I mean, the best, Tim, this was the best part, right? So we got to buy app after the invasion was over. And yeah, obviously third ID did all that shit. And I remember them setting up the PX at buy app and they opened it. Buy app was the bank yeah. at the international airport. They opened the PX and third ID literally had nothing to do. They wouldn't let them go yeah. home. They like yeah. kept them there for like four more months through September. Yeah. These fuckers would just camp out in their little camping chairs in front of the PX and just wait to go in and buy out what the PX was today. That's all they did. Yeah. That's all those fuckers did. They never sent them back out on security. They never went out and actually did infantry shit. They never patrolled. It was just like, nah, you guys are good. Just yeah. hang out. Just wait to go Bought home. Up all the Xboxes and all the oh, games and oh, so, dude, this is the best. So my favorite story about. Uh, just the dumb shit that went on prior to first armor division and general Dempsey showing up and turning it into a fucking garrison environment <laughs> that you could pretty much do what you wanted when it came to trip tickets. And we were big yeah. Madden fans, right? So PlayStation twos, we each brought me and my buddy, we each brought a PlayStation two from the States with us, but you know, you, you start living in a fucking desert dust does what dust does. And when they start breaking and they're not at our PX, but we had heard, through the power of email where one of our soldiers was running a post office down at camp dogwood they had some ps2s so we invented a trip ticket to convoy down to camp dogwood and you know acquire steal all <laughs> the ps2s that were being mail ordered from everybody else oh my god we did so much we they just did so much dumb shit like you could do a lot the first six months before first ad showed up you really could and the problem with us is when we showed up to Dogwood, it was right when a Chinook, you know, you know, not to, I don't know. Yep. You didn't fly a Chinook, but a Chinook had gotten shot down and we're driving onto the fob. And there's like this whole ring of people just securing it. Cause it's like on its side, laying down. It didn't blow up or anything, but it crashed. And I was like, well, this sucks. And it's been a few months since I've seen anything. Yeah. 
So that was one of those moments where I was like, why is there a fucking helicopter that's shot down and dude securing it? Because this is like May of 03. Yeah. Nothing's really going. Maybe it was probably June, maybe. It was before the 4th Triangle of July. Triangle of death, man. Yeah. Triangle of death. It was before I had my pass out moment in the, uh, the Burger King line during the USO 4th of July. One of those shoot downs, I was actually in the air. I had landed back in, uh, I think, Balad at the time. And they were like, is that where you're you're here. Were you out of that? Were you out of Balad? Oh, Balad was 0507. 0304 was out of Tikrit. Um, so you were hanging uh, out with Saddam. You just didn't know it. Bro. The dude was right down the street. <laughs> bro. Hey, I, yeah, spider hole. I, I got, I got to, to crit uh, like halfway through the unit's deployment, which was interesting all on its own. Like the power of being a warrant officer was very apparent because uh, when I first got to the unit out of flight school, like fresh FNG out of flight school, literally I show up and, and the guys are like, don't unpack. You're going to Iraq. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And so uh, a, a CW4 who I still keep in touch with today, rarely, but he, uh, he had come back cause he had leishmaniasis. So he got, you know, like the, the sand flea bites and everything he'd recovered. Mm-hmm. And it was me, another W1, and this W4, and they flew us calm air to Kuwait. Yeah, like that was interesting. Like being, I mean, you're sitting on like Kuwaiti air and like everybody's smoking and like eating <laughs> weird food and you're just cramped in the seat, right? And you're just supposed to be like, oh, hi, no thanks. I don't want to eat that weird crap. Uh, <laughs> and then like we land in Kuwait in the middle of the night, calm air. <clears throat> And this W4 just like random was like, yeah, we're going to go this way. Grab your bags. I'm like, okay. You know, like two double bags and this, and like dragging everything. A warm up. We get to one team. camp and he's like talking to some guy. A couple of handshakes later, one, a Black Hawk like headed across the border. I'm like, I have no idea where we're going. I'm just <laughs> following the W4. Right. And then like we land in by we get off, we sit in a PAX terminal again, like the W4 walks off, shakes a few hands, laughs a couple of times. Ha ha ha, blah, blah, blah. Hey guys, we're getting on a Blackhawk. We're going to the crib. I'm like, I have no idea what we're doing, but I'm a W1, so I'm going to do whatever the hell you say. Right. <clears throat> and then like, you know, then we land in Kuwait and it was early on. So they're like, Hey, the, you know, the junior warrant officer tent is over there and it's a tent with like no barriers and everything is covered in sand. I'm like, okay. Sweet. That's cool. Good old days. Oh man, that was great. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right, enough of you, Rob. I mean, all right. So there's Tim. All right, Tim. Let's let's let let's get your story. So there you are. You're in college. You're a fucking guard, right? How was how was how was college football life? Oh, it was easy. I don't. People have asked me, or you know, interview for jobs and stuff, right? And I haven't. So I haven't. This actually happened. So I interviewed for your job Friday. And nice. really, but well, it's still, still where I work, just a different position. So, oh, okay, well, I haven't interviewed in years. that doesn't count. That doesn't count, it really doesn't, it really doesn't because it's the same thing, it's a fucking Zoom call. So, it's me <laughs> just getting my way through interviews. In case you guys didn't notice yet, I'm pretty good at bullshitting, although I haven't really done any talking. So, um, no, I mean, it was really funny. Was I, I even all the way back then, uh, I have a few guys that I went with, uh, I played football with. There's a guy uh, by the name of Keith Main who uh, unfortunately he uh passed away i think two years ago but uh, when i met him he was probably 27 or 28 he was just the scariest fucking dude you'd ever met and i was big fine you know i was uh five eleven and three quarters six foot <laughs> hey we're six foot all right no <laughs> i'm five eleven and three quarters i know how it works for sports um, in college you always add two inches and 20 pounds so <laughs> you know what if you go into Google and Google my name, there's a couple pictures that show up. One is of my cousin, and you can tell it's not me. Uh, but another one is from like a player bio from a University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Yeah, you might find this picture. Uh, my collar on this shirt is so tight, my head's about to fucking pop like a pimple. I was five foot <laughs> five at the time. Uh, you, yeah, anyhow. So. But I mean, I was a big dude, but this guy Keith was scary as shit because he's like 6'3", probably about 270. Uh, I like the glamour shot. That's pretty legit. I get the fuck out of here. Is that my, <laughs> my LinkedIn? Man. <laughs> dude, that? Yeah, yeah. You both found it fantastic. Man, that is... Find the Focus. 
Yeah, I'm focused. Uh, Go ahead, buddy. Sorry. So, you know, <laughs> this guy actually is a funny story. So um, I was known, but I didn't find out this guy. He was actually a ranger. He was a seventh uh, bat back in, because I went to college in 01. So he was prior to that. He was in 75th, probably like 98, 99. But uh, this guy forever knew me as Timmy Lackoff, primarily because hey, you two are so Google and so fucking hard. I'm listening. I can, I can fucking I'm I'm listen. Listen. Wait, wait, no, I can multitask. Ball, I, mean, I may be a boomer. I am. Uh, we, we, got oh, into hey. the, we got into the oh, chat oh, way before you. Brother. And so I was talking to, I had a girlfriend at the time because I was a incoming freshman in college. So I don't want to be bothered. I had roommates. I locked the door. I was sitting there talking to her. It's fucking hot. And I knock on my door, knock on my door, knock on my door. Like, Jesus Christ. So I'm like, what? I open the door and I'm fucking sweaty. And they're like, were you like, dear Tommy, were, were you whacking off? And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, that didn't die. So the first college party I go to, I roll up on the porch at this place called the Doghouse. It's all the cool guys over there. And there's Keith Main, this big old ranger. And he's just like, he, oh, by the way, he had a fucking scar that like rolled up on his lip that just, if you weren't intimidated in general, it was like, but big fucking scar. You know what I mean? Like hold his lip up and you're like, Jesus fucking cheese and rice. And he just looks at me and he's sitting on this couch on the porch. It's 75 degrees in Wisconsin. It's fall. He's like, Timmy whack off. He just starts yelling. I'm like, <laughs> Timmy whack I don't know if I want to stay in college at this point. <laughs> and the BDA yeah. has a new nickname. Timmy you know, whack off. All right. I've had a lot of, I've had name in my phone. You guys be fine. But I don't know. That shit was all easy. It was fine, right? So I got through college. There were, there were a few guys I met that, that served. And, uh, got me interested. Actually, a buddy of mine that I played with, he, he didn't tell anybody this, but he got out of college. As soon as he graduated, he enlisted and went to OCS, and he was actually an engineer as well, like I am. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, that shit was, I mean, in retrospect, you guys went to school. Like, it wasn't all that special. College is college. Like people ask you, was you know, I was a new college hire doing interviews, and like, what's the hardest thing you remember about college? And I'm like, time management. Uh, I mean, well, it, it it for me it would depend. The first time I went, like, I, I scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part was going to class because I didn't. I I was convinced. Uh, I'm just here to play baseball, and apparently yeah. you have to go to class and maintain like some sort of academic eligibility. That was not explained to me. All right, you were doing yeah. Something. I think that was Division One, isn't it? What's that? Like you were, you were big time, weren't you? No, 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 no. I was, I was just like, uh, I was. No, I'm gonna call you big time because I have enough fucking nicknames. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, and then like, like I always tell everybody who comes in because I've told this stupid little army story a million times, but it's like, like I got to college and I realized everybody's good and I'm not anymore. Like that's how college baseball was for me. It's like, oh shit, everyone's good. I am. I really don't belong here if we're being honest and I'm not getting past this level. So fuck. But what? You know, I mean, that still you, wasn't enough for me. Cause I was too stupid to realize like, okay, you know that part, but you're still not going to class each day. What are you like? What are you doing? Like that, that, like, I was not prepared for college in terms of, athletics, uh, or in terms of the academic part whatsoever. I wasn't prepared for college either. I don't think, I mean, that's like, that's a separate discussion. Yeah. I don't think I high think school everything in any way right? prepares you. Yeah, like I remember my first year, I was academically ineligible to return. And so I went and I remember my athletic director, she told me, you need to get your GPA up for a semester and then you can come back. And I was like, okay, yeah. cool. So I did that. I got straight A's. I go back and she's like, well, you have to sit out a semester and, and do it again up here now. I'm like, all right. So you fucking, so in my head, I'm taking this personal, like she fucking lied to me and I'm just going to, you know what I'm going to do in, in, in protest. I'm just, Wait, not gonna, I'm just not going to go to school at all. That's I'm totally back. an Eric thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an Eric thing to do. Whoa. Yeah. So yeah. And then, you know, shortly thereafter 9-11 happened and I joined the fucking army and whatever, whatever. But yeah, I'll, I'll show her. I don't even remember her name. I remember her face, but I was like, now I look back on that. I'm like, how dumb are you to take <laughs> Like someone literally trying to help you get your life together and you're taking it personal. Like that wasn't, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are worse things to happen, Eric. I mean. I know, but the, the irony, she's sitting there trying to explain it to me. Like, well, you just got a 4.0. You can do it again. It's like, that's not the fucking point. The fucking point is. <laughs> no, I didn't say that to her. I wouldn't say that out you, loud. But. <laughs> she just, she just, um, that's so oh, dumb. man. So dumb. Yeah. And the irony of all of that is, is, uh, if it wasn't for that, then I would never have met you two. 
Okay. Oh, See how good that was? So Look touching. at that. That was what good. A segue. Hell yeah. What a segue. All right. Let's get back to some, let's talk some CrossFit shit. All right. I know. Let's, let's do some nerd shit. Um, oh. Because CrossFit's changed a lot since we've, we met each other in the, uh, the great spring in 2015. Yeah. Uh, Rich Fronin has come and gone from an individual competitor. Still winning titles, I guess, as a team guy. Uh, Matt Fraser has now retired, it looks like, right? Uh, That's huge. The, the women huge. are, I don't know, since Camila blanc Bazané have just been entirely too boring to watch. Here's what I don't understand. Let me see if you can explain this to me, Tim, because, you, you know, you, mm-hmm. you did compete athletically. You've seen really great people, really great talented people probably more talented than yourself. I'm saying like, so that I bring that up because I know you've seen really good and great athletes. And why has CrossFit essentially with Rich Froning, Matt Fraser and Tia Claire Toomey, why is there really no competition? Like there's other people there, but they're really just there. Like they don't, there's not enough money in it. I don't under, I don't think that's it though. But because these right, are, it's still 100%. the best people doing it. Right. I think there's this, there's like an unwritten rule when you look at professional team sports and stuff like that, like there's just a level. And when you get someone who pokes out above that level, they kind of get, yeah, they get the notoriety and stuff, but, but in a sport like football, like, yeah, sure. Athletic ability matters, but still 11 dudes on the field, right? Mm -hmm. CrossFit's definitely individual. And if you go look at individual sports like track and field, I've watched a lot of that lately, you know, for whatever reason, right? And, and they're competing not against one another. They're competing against a set. Uh, I mean, it's standard, right? You run the yeah. 400, the four by one, the 100, high jump, long jump, triple jump, shot, all that shit. It's just a standard. It is a thing, you know? CrossFit, yeah, there are, uh, you know, the benchmarks and the girls and shit like that. And so mm-hmm. that's always a test. But you keep throwing new shit out there and you just see people who excel at individual events. Right. But there's no standard per se. Right. Like you can recycle some of those things, but also, you know, it, you're going to see differentiation. But I don't think you you see the same, you know, level of people standing out up against the standard. Right. So I say all that to say like a team sport, people tend to stand out as individuals, but they're still part of the team. Right. Yeah. Jersey sell, but they're still part of the team. Right. Everybody fucking hates or loves Tom Brady. Jersey sell. All that really matters at the yeah. end of the day. Right. Individual sports, you've got standards to live up to. But CrossFit doesn't. It's, it's not as strict of a standard, frankly. Like, well, I, I mean, so I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, I think, I think there's, I, I think it's that to another level, because if you look at, say when you, back when there was regionals, if you look at the regionals performances before they stopped, it got to a point where it wasn't just specialists excelling. You got to a point where, you know, you had a, a guy like Josh Bridges, who is talented, uh, not, uh, physically good. capable, but like, he had a hole and you got to a point at regionals where you couldn't have a bad workout, right? You know, you, you look at towards the end of the regionals where you couldn't have a finish outside the top 10 and still qualify because but everybody was good. I also don't think Bridges had a hole. I think he's just limited by his fucking birth. The guy's five foot five, right? And we've seen, it seems to be like Fraser is five, six, five, seven by all accounts, but still like for whatever reason, it seems like the CrossFit wheelhouse is the rich Fronin, right? You're five, well, eight, five, nine. Yeah. You're 190 yeah. to 195 pounds. Yeah. Cause that's big enough to be strong, but you know, yeah. 30 pounds over Josh Bridges yeah. or 20, whatever it is that limits yeah. your ability to do move or to, or to move the heavier weight that people need to. Right. Which is why I would have said, and what we were talking about, Rob, like you weren't going to fuck with Tim in terms of weight. If he could get the technique down when it came to the Olympic lifts, but yeah, you know, I look at this Absolutely. dumbass shit that he logs like, Oh, I'm just, deadlifting 575 and doing workouts with 425 like it's for fucking fun well they say that in olympic lifting right like mass moves mass and tim's got a lot of fucking mass all right let's just be straight (laughs) yeah like if tim had technique he should snatch 400 let's let's be honest with his brute strength coupled with technique you should snatch 400 i i think i think if tim and 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 this goes to like another like tangent i think if tim exclusively trained Olympic weightlifting and for didn't a, have a year family. and didn't have a family, <laughs> yeah. but well, like just exclusively or, trained Olympic or weightlifting a real job. We're a real job. I'm, I'm quali- Like I'm saying he qualifies for not only the American open, but he qualifies probably for nationals. 
like. And that's at what? How old, are, how old are you now, Tim? We find this so difficult. It's the same reason that Froning and Frazier got out when people are like, oh, he's just at his prime. Like, that's all they do. It's yeah. like bodybuilding, right? I mean, all you do is you focus on what you eat, when you eat, when yeah. you eat when how old. you eat. That's all you fucking do. And so I'm sure Frazier, like a lot of people look at him and go, oh, I don't understand. Like, he's fucking tired. Well, I think he just wanted no, to I, beat, I, I think he wanted to do I think he wanted to beat Froning's record of four individual titles in a row, right? And right. Well, I mean, and give it like give it up to Froning. Uh, give it to Frazier because here here's here's the thing that I think is I admire about him to the nth degree. That dude let nobody know what he was doing. You didn't see him trying to cash in on the online programming deal, like, oh, follow my program. I'm well, you got to look like, at the evolution. Like, well, he but, did wait, nothing. Okay. But he retired, and now what's he doing? Well, of course. <laughs> that's, like, that's it's it's, it's almost like it's too now, little right? too late. Because no. remember, let, I'm, I, mean, I, no, many, I get like, it. His, his YouTube channel exploded, dude. No, now I know. I got that. I'm like, saying he, the peace. reason it's going to work for someone like him is because he still is the fucking five-time CrossFit Games champion, right? Yeah, he was untouchable. But what I'm saying is, we were in Kuwait. Who started it? Oh man, dude, we were doing what's Rich doing? Exactly, it was Frodo like, that started it. I mean, honestly, that Wait. was the first. <laughs> that was my first experience with online programming. Yeah, because Eric yeah. was like, "Yo, bro, I only do one thing. I do what's Rich doing." And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that shit. I do. I don't want to do what you're doing. I want to do. What yeah, you're doing. Like, that's that's 100 Eric. Like, Hey, that's cool. I'm yeah. going to do what's Rich doing. Yeah. And then we all did. And sorry, Rich, but there was probably like 10 of us using your one thing. So we, you know, we were ripping them off, but mm -hmm. you know, and, and but, I just, I remember looking at the volume of program, like, dude, I'm going to have to do like two or three days. Dude, that I'm shit was about the fucking time, Rob. Yeah, that was, but it was so weird because it actually worked. Cause we were able to almost be in that environment where Tim's describing, like, that's all you have to do is work out. That's all you get to do. And we could do it. Now we so didn't have I, the skill. Yeah. So, I mean, like, <laughs> honest, between you guys, like, tell me, I, I, I played, I played division one tennis. Yeah. I was about to, to say, college. like, I forgot to mention Rob actually is the division one athlete amongst us. He was a tennis That's player. No, 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 no. NCAA <laughs> division two. Whatever. Like he, two Rob years. was a tennis anyway. player. Right? Mm -hmm. He's, he, Rob's an athlete as well. No one be. Uh, um, Eric, so, Eric, were you NAI? Okay. We got two yeah. division three. Sorry. Proceed. Yeah. Right. No, I was NAI division one. So that doesn't count either. But anyway. Tell me, like, honest, the year that we were in Kuwait, I have never, ever felt more like a professional athlete. Exactly. Yes. Because we had our food never. for free. We ate never. whatever the fuck we want, whenever we wanted. It was Midnight free. chow? Dude, mm -hmm. I could eat eight eggs for breakfast, four chicken breasts throughout the yeah. day. And then on Saturdays, we'd go eat a whole fucking pizza from Pizza Hut yeah. and yeah. a gallon of milk and a roll of fucking <laughs> chewy chips ahoy. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the the Timmy Manch Midnight Chow Burrito? Do you remember that thing? That was that was zone one burrito. Yeah, it was zone one burrito. Yeah, just like Sunday, burrito. you could go up to zone describe one and get the French French toast stick mountain that I brought I over from Afghanistan. BDA, describe the burrito. I don't know why this is a problem, but listen, I I, I was going to say uh, before I describe this burrito and let everybody's you know hopes down. That was the first time since uh, seventh or eighth grade I broke two thirty <laughs> on the downstroke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good. That was a good year. Um, was a speaking good. of zone one on Sundays, right? The the uh, the the brunch down there. Yeah. And I would. I think first I would go through the sandwich wrap line yeah. and get the wrap with nothing. So I have like a giant, just a giant wrap. And I'd be like, "Thank you, no, that's all." <laughs> and it was like the and it was like the Chipotle burrito wraps, not like the yeah, little yeah, like soft like taco a, deal. It was like a 16 inch thing, you know, like <laughs> a <little>. big wrap. <laughs> then I would go to the, the regular line and I would get bacon to line the the wrap. And I'd say, no, that's good. And then I would go to the omelet line and get an omelet and, and just put the omelet in the middle of the wrap. And then I would go over to like the bagel station, the cream cheese. <laughs> so I could put cream cheese on top of the omelet before i wrapped it to lock everything in and the hash browns you're forgetting the hash browns oh, i right. remember i remember this dude right. Right. like taking an omelet with bacon and then going back to the breakfast line like can i get two I hash had to browns get the wrap line to the main line to get hash browns and bacon not just bacon hash browns and bacon and then to the omelet stand to get the omelet and then i have to go over to the bagel stand to get the yeah uh, and you guys were really mad about that what 
I mean, I don't really I don't know why. I just remember the look of fright on the TCNs as they were watching you assemble this. Yeah, thing. because those guys are all 130 pounds. They're not BDAs like this guy, Tim. They don't know my what it means to eat about, and perform. It, you know, we, we, we abuse those food lines, right? Like, my, probably my oh, favorite. Man. Those guys who come in and be like, like, I think we got it. We just tailored what we were eating to what was available. You know, like, we weren't yeah. precocious about it. It was yeah. like, hey, there's a there's a tub of salad. I'm just going to have salad today and some chicken, right? Like, yeah. that was the first time I cut weight, right? You had the people that were super, like, snooty about it. And they come and be like, I want an egg white omelet with spinach and whatever. And, like, nerds. that host nation dude yeah. would just look at him and, like, ladle out of the yellow tub. <laughs> just keep yeah. On. Yeah. <laughs> just get, yeah. On the griddle. It was great. Oh, God. That was it, great. Fantastic. it really was. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. That's that's an excellent point, Rob. That's you know, for nine months we were unpaid I, I, professional I, athletes. Unpaid. I mean, really, I, I know mean, we were paid, like, I guess, first in the 15th. Yeah, like I had <laughs> like I had a job or you know, I went and I did like yeah, you guys worked way things. more than me. Like I would I remember I had that silly little thing I did probably two years ago. I was like, I'm just gonna do the workout that I did on this day when we were in Queen. Yeah, right. day, and I was like it got to the point where I was like, I can't, I don't have enough time to do this shit. Yeah. Like how, where did, yeah. It, yeah. And then if I wasn't in the gym, I was literally sitting in my little area in the fucking transient housing, just, you know, binge watching Netflix. Well, it wasn't Netflix then it was. No, I had the VPN dude. I was Netflix yeah. all day. No, I didn't have Netflix. It was, it was <laughs> something that was like a Netflix knockoff, but it was, it was hosted in Sweden or Switzerland or some shit. But anyway, I was just watching TV. And then if I got bored, I was like, well, I guess I'll just go over to the gym and I'll do something. But like, I mean, like it was like a, it was like a hundred foot walk to the gym. It wasn't like I even had to do it. And it, was, it was, oh, you were right around the corner. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I was spoiled, man. Like, but nowadays I feel like it's, it's even more apparent nowadays that CrossFit as an exercise methodology is different from CrossFit, the sport. Oh, yeah and it, i think even we were now even more yeah. than ever be yeah, i mean it's the same thing like it's no different than like dudes who want to play basketball on the weekends in the ymca and think they're fucking lebron james like bro you're not right now tim says there's not enough money in it. here's here's what i want people to re remember so for those people who don't know rich froning did five individual crossfit games he came in second in his very first one and he won the next four before he went to teams the very first one, when he got second place, his prize money, as he stood on a fucking plate, or a, it was like two plates, he had yeah. he won $500. Yeah, they stacked some 45s up, and they're like, yeah. here's your trophy. The next year when he won, Reebok, as Rob is reminding us via his shirt, became the sponsor, and he For won 200, 200, what, 250 or $275,000. Like, that's a very significant yeah. cash influx yeah. into the sport. And- my issue with the prize money overall is that kind of what Tim's saying as well, regardless, because there's still enough people trying to do it. Um, you can't be a CrossFit Games athlete and live off your prize money unless you win. Because uh, 100%. You know, from 300,000 plus a few more, maybe two or 3,000 for individual events tacked on from winning to if you come in 10th, you get like 20 grand that pays for your fucking trip basically. And your supporters and your coach maybe for that week, like there's not enough money for everyone in it. There's not a salary. There's none of that shit. And you know, I'm not first. I know we're, we're talking about the new sponsor, Rob. Like it doesn't surprise me when Reebok, hey, man. Just, Reebok just got sold for 15 million. They don't have the money to look, do this shit anymore. Look, Reebok, Reebok, look, you look at the, the, the cash infusion that Reebok had put into the games, by the way, Here's an example. I'm wearing a Reebok t-shirt. If you look at the label, which I cut off, it would say Adidas. Right. Right. It was like, <laughs> I mean, like, come on, man. But I mean, here's the deal. I have no, I have no worries about no bull paying for the CrossFit games. I mean, you're charging well, I just like, want Yeezy, them, I like Yeezy boost money for some flip flops. Like, I just come want on, man. To, yeah. I, look, I will never buy it. And there's, look, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't, I am looking into the camera. I did not have i will never buy anything from noble because i think it's the biggest fucking gimmick that ever came out and it originated i bought like a I pair said, of shoes fuck I, that. I, I no had, i'm not I doing had a pair it no no i had a pair of noble high top she had no what were those high tops she had quick what were those what, what's that those high tops i didn't have the high tops yeah you did i think I did? you had the noble high top oh no 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 i had uh wait no those were Reebok. Reebok. 
Yeah, those Reebok, Reebok. had the the the, oh. the lifter yeah. lights. Yeah, those are Reebok, which were like the modern chucks. Those are freaking amazing. I don't look. Know here's my thing. I don't. They I don't redid those, but I don't know what no no bull is gonna. I don't know what the payout is gonna be. I don't. I, if they keep it great, if they increase it even better, what I am saying is that if you're gonna have what is it, twenty male athletes? Is that what they're trying to do? Twenty from each? Like I don't know. Whatever. Or if the- you qualify for the fucking cross, like, well, here's my thing. That's another rant. Let me just stick with the prize money first, and then I'll go on the next fucking rant. The top twenty fucking people need to get paid at a minimum. The, the whoever comes in twentieth should be leaving with fifty. There's plenty of fucking money in that sport. There's plenty that's, of money from sponsors. all sponsorship, man. Like, look uh, at a oh, golf There's tournament. plenty. The uh, there's that, thirty thousand affiliates paying three thousand dollars a year just from affiliates, right? So let's not even get into what Glassman did to tear the brand down last oh. year. Let, we'll, we'll leave that alone because Eric Rosas is coming. I think it's Rosas. He's come in and he's doing his thing. <clears throat> Put it this way. There is more than enough money to pay the top 20 fucking people if you average that out 50 on up to whatever your, your winner is going to take. But here's my thing that I really don't like, and I wanted to kind of get your opinion on this, is um, – Tim, you know, this is no different than when we did fucking company events at the, at the CrossFit gym in Air of John. If we have a team and it's you and I, what were we called? Like something, the blonde, I don't know. We did something and I did the bare minimum and, and, and Tim won everything. <laughs> right. But then other people send like their best people and they don't do shit. It's like, I don't want to see the fucking champion from South Africa going up against Matt Fraser. I don't want to see the champion of France going up. Like you're not going to compete. I just want to see the, the 20 best people, which I think they're starting to do again, based on this sectional thing that they've brought back, but I'm sorry, man. And I only say it from a financial aspect as well. It's like you had all these people two years ago, send all these people for one fucking event. And Castro was like, bye. Like, come on. That's just dumb. Uh, I mean, look, that's controversial. I, I, Good. I, mean, I hope it is. Am I wrong? Like, usual event type sports, right? So, like I, I said, track and field before, whatever it is, Diamond League or the right. The and I get that. That's a, it's a good comparison. But, but the point is, you, you you're right. You have to make it equitable and in, in somewhere between prize winnings for individual events, and, and maybe it shouldn't even be like uh, the overall winner. Like if you say the games, like every individual event winner gets a 10 grand bonus or something like that. Right. I mean, there's a lot of ways to flourish this. Right. But it is about um, endorsements and stuff like that. Right. Because you don't have to make them rich. You just have to make them make a living and let them pursue their their passion, which is the sport. Right. But if you make that more accessible, then that's even better. Right. You spell that out and and show that there's a capacity to do that. You're going to get more people involved. Like it's, it's, but that's a terrible model, right? Because it's not like the NFL is like, well, you know, league minimum is 400 grand. Like, fuck it. I'm going to try to make me league minimum. Like you're not, you piece of shit. Well, just- at least they got a union to negotiate that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's just, it's not, it doesn't make it more accessible. Like it should be more about the community. Like the fact that we did CrossFit together was because we sat down and said, we want to do what's rich doing. And we got a yeah. good time. We felt <laughs> better in shape, all that kind of bullshit. Right. Yeah. Now it's like, uh, you're competing to be the best at some bullshit. Like, oh, okay, so I'm going to give this guy shit. There's a guy at my gym. Um, <laughs> it, it's just not necessarily about him. Like, I'm going to give him sort of it's <laughs> bullshit, but it is what it is. So uh, my box does not have uh, any metal weights except for like fives and two and a half and some fractional weights, right? That's pretty typical. Right, um, right. But I don't, whatever, this sounds however the fuck it sounds. Um, <laughs> When you use 55 pound plates and you put four on the bar, so you get well, eight on the bar, right? Four on each side, that's uh, 440. 485. Right, with 55 the bar. Pound. Yeah. 485, yeah. yeah. You've got about uh, an inch and a half of bar left. Okay, so yeah. I I have to use like monster bands, the, the shit that you do, like monster walks with the little <laughs> this bands. Is, this, this is the Tim's deadlift warm up. This, this, this is the Tim's the Insta famous, <laughs> like, this is what, what I, I have like to this. do to get a workout. This is. Let me finish, Jack. I do the other right? So I, I, it was like 25s, and I did 45s, and I just, I didn't, whatever. So that's 575, right? Because four 55s and I'm 45. But they're hanging off the end of the bar. Well, there's this cat at my gym. Um, I can't say his name. Ethan, you'll never know it was you. 
<laughs> I give him shit. He had these he had these hundred pound steel plates that he he got himself, right? It was cool. He got him. He said, "Hey, uh, I only work out of the box, so I'm gonna bring him in the box." And he brought him in, and and they sat there, and no one ever fucking touched him. And one day I was like, "Hey, can I borrow those?" And then uh, I did because I was gonna use them in the Adventure Dome. And then I just didn't take them back for six months because I was kind of a dickhead. So I did, and then <laughs> right, it's fine. I did, and and they got used, and it was great. Uh, and then one day he was like, hey, can I borrow some 25 pound dumbbells? And it's been a year and he hasn't given them back. <laughs> but he took his 100 pound plates home. And so we're doing this deadlift workout the other day. And like, I, I can only do what I can literally fit on the bar. Like I can't balance shit on top of the bar. And I mean, <laughs> BDA but, problems. Yeah, exactly. BDA, BDA problems. problems, man. Don't have this issue. I know, I know. But the point is like, what if he didn't bring them back on purpose? Like, why is it a competition? Shouldn't we celebrate? Like, we've had a bunch of, we had we had a couple of chicks in the gym that hit, I think one of them hit like 330 on a deadlift, or two of them Damn, hit like that's 320, awesome. 330. There was some, uh, you know, like women that you would. Uh, was just, it sumo? You, huh? Was it sumo? <laughs> no, I mean, like, you should, we should be celebrating. I'm serious. I see. No, it wasn't. It was regular, right? I, you okay. know, you see people that are hitting PRs that are not, you know, like a 220, 225 PR for. Yeah women that are somewhere between like 35 and 55, you know? I'm like, that's, that's, that's fucking great. Like yeah, that's pretty fucking congratulations, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, meanwhile, that's awesome. old, old boys over here, like, I'm just going to keep my plates at home and bring them to the six o'clock class. So that the fucking, this big dumb asshole doesn't deadlift. Yeah, more than that's, it's actually big that's dumb like animal, a, not big dumb <laughs> that's a separate <laughs> problem, man. Wait, like, so do we know I mean, he's brought them back or maybe he's sold no, they're them? definitely not there. I don't know. I'm hypothesis. You, I mean, you know, I'm, COVID's been hitting people. I, you get a lot of money for hundred pound plates. Bro, I'm just saying on the black the market. Inflation. The that's inflation, a lot of money. The inflation on those plates. Bro, hundred pound uh, plate will get you 5k. Facebook <laughs> marketplace, man. <laughs> but I think what he's describing is, um, yeah, it's there's a difference it's, between it's not doing CrossFit for the community. Right. It's, it to it's be competitive. You're the competitive. Just right. to say you're able to do something better than something. I mean, you guys is, okay. I'm probably fucking Rob, you don't go to box anymore, right? Well, so no, so here's, here's no, here's I have I have, so I've dropped in at a couple of boxes. I'm actually so I I worked out by myself that, done on programming. I hate the term box. I just I hate the uh, word. I don't know what it is. All I hate right. the word. But anyway, go ahead. So I've, I've worked out almost exclusively for probably like the last five, six years, man. And like done some, done, done some of my own stuff, like in my extensive garage gym or whatever. Your gym looks nice. I don't uh, but, uh, dude, dude, the basement gym, like that's probably the only reason I bought that house. And Sorry. also hold on before um, he goes, I just, for, for those who don't realize, like Rob is an athlete because pound for pound, I feel like he's stronger than the two of us when it comes to Olympic lifts. Cause Not he still anymore. cleans 245, yeah. and I don't get it. Cause he weighs like yeah. a buck 20. Uh, didn't <laughs> 255 like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. 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 That's, I, I, I will never, it'll never happen for me. It's just never going to happen. Uh, 130% of your body weight. Yeah. It, never going to happen for me. You know, that's like Tim doing 365, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which he like he could do, he could do. I mean, you know, body weight clean for him, he could do. I'm just saying it. Like I still remember you doing 245 when we were in Kuwait, and so, I was like, I don't understand. Like that was the most demoralizing moment for me because I had this a bit of a buildup in my head. Like I'm, I'm probably gonna be pretty good in a few months, and then I watched, you know, Rob at 175 pounds do 245, and I still couldn't barely do 195 i was like fuck this all, all of that progression <laughs> happened while i was in kuwait man like I, the first time i power cleaned 225 was like tim was holding my freaking android phone uh you know and like that was the first time i power cleaned 225 i mean can't believe that, you android. that's that's embarrassing yeah i know anyway <laughs> goodness gracious you, but you know what, I, a lot know. of that happened while i was at kuwait and and i mean even when I like I came back, um, I went through a period where I, I remember I, I was telling you guys I took a year and all I did was focus on the Olympic lifts. That's all I did. Um, I was yeah. following John Norris programming with uh, with Team Do. Fan fantastic! <laughs> like that was such a freaking bargain. That guy's amazing. Um, but you know, I mean, I've said it before, Eric, you can power clean more than me. 
because yeah. you're freaking stronger than me. It's just, it's a technique deal. Well, yeah, no, exactly. Well, I, I, I do have, re- yeah, I got it. It's all excuses for me at this point in my life. Um, no, really. but I mean, but like if we, if we broke, like if we broke down the, the I mean, I still literally like this is like from breaking my arm, this is the flexibility in my right shoulder. So I'm always limited in the front rack position. Like I literally yeah, can't please. touch the shoulder with my right arm, my left arm. I can give myself a massage. I can't. Yeah. So that's always been now snatching's different. Um, yeah. I think the most I ever actually did a legit squat snatch in was 185, and I've never tried to go heavier than that because it just I don't trust myself. No, I don't. I know Tim probably power snatches 225, but I think that was always his limit was like the squat snatch, right? Like that was. Yeah. You're referring no. to one time we did that competition. And I was that fucking big dumb. Was it Dan? No. Hanging out and no. who was powered everything? Do you so you you remember that competition where it was like cleans and burpees over the bar burpees and tim finishes like the clean at 315 he's like is that it are we gonna do another bar <laughs> <laughs> like like that was that was me right? and, uh, uh what was it that? was you and dan it was you and dan, was dan yeah like, but it wasn't the it last wasn't, bar and you're like there's no other bar oh, that was the clean thing but you know what wasn't yeah. that was that was that the competition we did over like a weekend yeah it was like yeah, the, that was what? fun what? man like because oh. there was like a, a Here's here was my favorite moment of Tim. Now I remember it was that fucking sled push. Do you remember that shit, Rob? Did you watch that? I, I think so. Dude, it was like a one sled one. push with yeah. it was either one plate or two plates on it. And everyone's yeah. doing it in like, I don't know, 25, 20. I don't even remember what it was. But Tim goes out there and runs it full speed. Like yeah. it's a fucking football drill. Doesn't get remotely tired because it just doesn't weigh enough to get him tired. And like I questioned whether or not that yeah. sled was even on the ground. Like he just it was, picked it up and like <laughs> yeah, just like ran with it. Yeah, but then I remember. Like, do you remember what your box jump was, Tim? Because I was always curious. I think that was the Terrible. one thing I didn't uh, see you. Forty-two or forty-three yeah. inches. Because mine was like forty. Uh, yeah. What that's is weird, weird though, because like that's like a vertical leap is pure hip explosion, and you clearly have that. Like that's obviously why you're so strong. You have Massive very body weight, bro. Weight pushing down. On yeah, me. but no, I just because because what's it say? Was it is it Dan? Is that his name? Yeah. I, mean, I know who we're talking about. I just can't remember. Yeah. His, I have him on fucking Instagram, but yeah, I remember he jumped like 52 inches. It was fucking yeah. stupid. Like he could, like he could literally like he was a great athlete, but another dude who just I don't know. There's limits to this shit, right? Because we find all these guys who are very, 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 very good, but they ain't got a shot at beating fucking the Fronings and the Frasers in the world. And even the dudes well, who are think, runners up, like fucking Olsen and shit now, and now this new guy. I think they time still, has they an don't, issue too. They still don't compete. They still don't the, legitimately threat. The Do you remember the last event? Fraser didn't yeah. even fucking try and won yeah. it. Yeah. Like, like he literally just tried to stay with Tia and they still fucking won. It made no sense. And that was a, that was a grinder event, right? Where it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour. He didn't that's, fucking that's try. An ad, like, he if didn't it's try. taking games athletes that long to finish that workout, that's something no that, average person yeah. should exactly. ever try. That fucking dude yeah. didn't even try and he still won and Noah Olsen's, he's, Fraser's looking back like, you could go beat me if you'd like. Like he wasn't even going to try to win it and, and Olsen still couldn't catch him. It's like, dude. I don't understand. I've never seen a sport where I know Tim was trying to explain this, but I've never seen, and I get, we're still very young in the, 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 the evolution of this sport. If we're going to be honest, I've never seen a sport where it's just so dominated by the winners at the top, especially in the male. Sure. But I mean, even now, I mean, Tia, but- these women don't even, it's not even a competition for Tia, but think about how much you have to have line up. Like, you, it doesn't to, seem like much, that, Rob. If you win, every, you win five years like, in a row, and it's not even close. But I mean, to win <laughs> at that level, you have to be oh, so good. Like, remember the old, you remember the old beyond the whiteboard discussions of like, hey, if you're logging on beyond the whiteboard, understand this: if you are not in the 99th percentile yeah. of every <laughs> single thing you do, you can't go to regionals. You cannot <laughs> go even to, even to regionals. Yeah. And that was Tim. You know? Tim was always like 97. It was like, oh, yeah. so close, bro. We're like 78 and feeling happy about it. And Tim's like 97. <laughs> ah, you're still not there, man. Oh, like, damn, like, Tim, honestly, you couldn't squeeze out two more reps? Like, Seriously, really? bro. Come on now, man. I think you but should that, do that one That's again. what I think the problem is, man, is like this bell curve gets weird really quickly because there's a ton of us that are in the middle. And then that really – but it's also why I kind of feel like it's, it's kind of getting to the point where – 
I think I use Major League Baseball as a better qualifier because the only other thing that's remotely close, I would say, is the NBA because only five guys are on the floor on each team. There's only yeah. there's only eight guys who aren't pitchers on the baseball field. You know, there's 11 guys in football. Do you, people don't realize just how vast the gap is between the guys who are just on the fucking court or on the field and yeah. then as opposed to the guys who were in training camp or who got invited to spring training or who well, get I mean, play even, in the G League in basketball, like you ain't that even good. Even further man. than that. You're that good, but you ain't that good. You know what I mean? And then well, there's all of us who are like, I'm going to make the CrossFit games. Like, no, the fuck yeah. you're not. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, think, think about some of the guys that have tried to make the transition, right? Like, uh, like Sonny Webster, that dude from the UK. Like, wasn't he going to try his hand at CrossFit? And then uh, – couple of weightlifters were going to try their their hand at crossfit they're like oh i got banned from weightlifting so i'm just going to be a crossfit because yeah, you're a fucking drug. well you know what's weird yeah. though also tim and i want to get your take on this because i go back to froning guy was a he was a division two baseball player and he quit after his first year because he just wasn't that good and he wanted to go be a firefighter right uh fraser he was he was on the path to be an olympic lifter he was in the training he got injured and they, he just wasn't that good right uh, Tia Claire Toomey is probably the, the outlier because, but that's Australia. And so I'm not trying to knock Australia, but it ain't America. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying when it comes to athletes, whoa, 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 whoa. Right? Frazier was, Frazier was a national champ in weightlifting. Let's, was he? Yeah. I, 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 was, I'm almost, almost, I think, I, I think almost you're, like, yeah, you're not certain, but you're almost certain. And I'm almost certain you're wrong. So what, Rob, Rob, who, what now? He Matt said, Frazier. he said, I, Matt I Fraser was a national champion. Was, I think he was junior national champion. Seventeen hundred, something like that. Yeah, it's not okay. like it's not like the guy. I mean, look, so so man, we can we can we can be honest. Like our best athletes still don't like you know what CrossFit's for me, and it's probably because of what Tim said. The money's not there. Our best athletes are still significantly bigger, faster, and stronger than these dudes. Now maybe they can't run a mile like some of these fuckers, but our best athletes are still in the NFL and NBA and basketball and and I I would argue yeah. that's why we I would argue that's why we don't do as well as we should do in a sport like soccer because our best athletes aren't in it right yeah that's true right so but if we're looking at crossfit and and we seem to see like who seems to be the guy that's winning is not the fucking six foot three or six foot five freak it's a dude who's like five nine 195 200 pounds maybe that's the sweet spot for to be able to do the strength but then to be able to do all the fucking the stuff with high capacity right moving you know, all the whatever crossfit's meant to be you know moving what's the fucking prescription of crossfit constantly varied constantly varied across broad high time intensity. and modal domains right yeah high yeah. intensity uh, you know maybe maybe a lebron james can't do all that shit but he could probably do a lot of shit if he trained for it right but think about like uh one of my favorite athletes of all time kalipa right yeah B the original bda Right now, right, dude. <laughs> I mean, dude, he's so, your so blueprint. The, the bank of athletes that are successful in CrossFit tend to be like slightly bigger, right? You don't start with like I would almost say like a Fikowski is a, an, an anomaly, he's an outlier. Yeah, a small he's a guy. Swimmer. That dude's a swimmer. Yeah, right. Like that is an outlier, right? But you look at and, and a Spieler too, I guess, an outlier, right? Oh, but, he, Chris Spieler to this day is the most underappreciated dude. Like, if you yeah. go back and look at the Open, not to cut you off because I am cutting you mm -hmm. off, but I'm gonna let you pick this up. It, like two years ago, like it was the clean like a one rep clean. If you go and look at what his body weight was yeah, times the amount of weight he did, it's not yeah. even close, but you know what? He did like three something, which is a joke compared to all these fucking freaks who are significantly he, bigger. You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 160 pounds, right? Like, yeah. And that's what I mean is uh, guys who have been wildly successful tend to be a bigger, like an endomorph, you know, and they've scaled down and they've, just gotten more fit. Yeah, Eric, I was wondering about the <laughs> I was like, like, he drinks too much, he has to take a leak. But they've been endomorphs and they've been bigger body size, right? And and like a Kalipa. I have to plug I, in the computer. That's a problem. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but Kalipa is, I think, a good example, right? Because he was, yeah, a great, the original BDA, but like, have you ever done, uh, what is it? It was like uh, an EMOM, 20 minutes. Uh, on the even minute, you do 20 row cal. On the odd minute, you do fucking twenty burpees. Like, I can't, I can't do that. And, and it's I insane. Can't, I can't right? do one he round of that. Applied, he just applied potato strength. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would do this, yeah. you know. He had n not great form, not great coaching. Yeah, you know, he was just raw power output. 
And I think the difference is like he had the desire, but behind Froning, Frazier, and a lot of those guys, it's not like they're just doing it on their own. They've got coaching, they've got nutritionists, they've got all this resource that's available to them. And, and they are willing to dedicate to doing nothing but that, you know? And like, you guys give me shit. I'm like, yeah, if I lost 50 pounds, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking dangerous. That's a lot of weight to lose. <laughs> like I said, I, I enjoy cooking, as you've seen. I enjoy drinking. I've got kids that some mornings I wake up and I don't go to the gym because my fucking four-year-old is there like poking me in the back because it's 5.30 in the morning and I'd rather just sit there, you know? Like, <laughs> there's not that level of distraction for the elite athletes. They don't have those things. And you look at when Frazier, when Frazier excuse me, retired, he had kids finally, right? I'm sorry, I'm Frazier, Froning. Froning, yeah, yeah. yeah. Froning retired, right? He had, he had little kids and it was just, I mean, frankly, if you train all day and go to your gym, like you're just not around, you know? And right. even well, more- and I mean, and- and, and to that them. point, well, and to that point, like Kalipa, he's one of the few guys that had a separation between his two victories. Right? He's also the first guy to come up with how to be profitable as a businessman in in, in oh, CrossFit. Good Bob, yeah, man. and but that goes from his background, man. That guy, was yeah, he came from the global the world, but he, he's, yeah. he's 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 the first guy, and I don't even think but, anyone's done it since. I know Fronin opened another CrossFit gym in Michigan with his cousin, but that's he's not trying to be global. But to, to Tim's credit, though, Kalipa, like, the, the dude won it when you didn't have to be good at everything. And then he comes back. Well, who was after, second place? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Spieler. Yeah. <laughs> who was but, freaking yeah. out with fucking headphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, doing, doing body weight thrusters or whatever it fucking was on that last event while Kalipa's walking around at 205. And Spieler, yeah. that poor guy, is doing his body weight. Like yeah. it wasn't set up in originally for a guy like Spieler to win. And I argue, no, but he's still freaking jam- goes back to your he's still freaking point. Yeah. Just, Bridges will win individual events. Like he won Murph, but he's never going to win the CrossFit games. Well, I mean, how many times did he get close on the, like how many times did he win the open or finish in the top five? You know, yeah, like but Bridges- the open, the opens, the open doesn't count. The opens over five weeks, right? CrossFit games yeah. is, a, is a five to seven day oh, event, whatever you want to call yeah. it. But and that's why I felt like Froning was always able to win is because he was the first guy to like, why do we got to work out once a day? Why don't we yeah. work out twice a day? Why don't we work out yeah. three? Why don't we just work out all fucking day? And by the time yeah. Sunday came, all these dudes are tired and sore. And Froning's like, what's up, bro? Let's do this again. And he yeah. could pull away and win. But not the point. The fact that you can like work out and like, oh, I'm just, I'm going to go to my office now because there's food and water in there. <laughs> an hour later and like warm up again and work out and just yeah. go back to my office because there's food and water in there. <laughs> it's, it's like cool. me and Kuwait. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't yeah. have the talent. It's just like yeah. baseball all over again. Just not talented enough. <laughs> I can yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but like that time in Kuwait, like I, I think the biggest thing I took away from that like nine months of trying to be a professional CrossFit athlete was it's fun. Rec- recovery is everything. Bless you. It is, but what were we able to do? I, Dude, I was able to sleep, man. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 he was if you're listening like, to this I, I specifically, and you're going to buy a freaking scrape tool or like a massage gun and you're not getting eight hours of sleep, you know, save your fucking money. Like one of the most selfish, but decisions I also felt was the best thing for us was I remember going to the LT and she's like, Sarnsky, what do you want to do for PT? I'm like, it's an individual event, ma'am. Let them do it individually because we had three shifts either way. But I was, I was trying to get her to buy in because I didn't want to fucking get up. I didn't want to come up with a plan where we all, all three shifts. Cause I felt like it just wasn't fair. It wasn't equitable. Someone's going to get screwed. So I was like, let them do it on their own. Because I wanted to be able to do my own thing and I wanted to sleep like Ross said. I wanted to fucking, I wanted to oh, get man. up because breakfast stopped at what, 8.15? I wanted to get up yeah. at 8 and be the last guy in line to get whatever I wanted. You know, do that. Do my days. two Starbucks cool. trips on my way to the office, zone six and zone one. What up? And then go to the <laughs> office for literally two hours, do what I had to do. And then I just wanted to be at the gym at one o'clock until it was time for us to fucking go home. It was great. I, uh, <laughs> I tried to do it two days. I would get up at like, I don't know, five something. And me and uh, so I shared a room with me and my commander in my first sergeant because I was an XO, right? And I would go to the gym with my first sergeant. We would go hang out there and then oh, hang out, fucking go lift and like do the fucking curls and all that kind of bullshit and then go eat. And so, like, but the problem was I was 
doing a whole bunch of shit and working until like one every morning. So yes, I got the nutrition down. Yeah, I got you did. The you, you had like down. I didn't get the fucking <laughs> down. So my three-legged stool was a piece of shit. Yeah, your actual deployment schedule was like a real deployment schedule. Yeah, it was it <laughs> Sorry, was pretty man. awful, man. But you were also the youngest, so I don't really feel like, bad for you. I let it. I let it become that way. That was my own fault. Sorry. <laughs> so I mean, like, that's... No, one, no one was there to see me eat all the cookies at one in the morning. <laughs> Eating that was my crap. favorite part of the weekend. It's like I'm going to the PX to get an actual quart of real milk. <laughs> that was the the, the Bandazuski Dirty Gains program. <laughs> quart of real milk and a box of Chewy Chips Ahoy, Chips, and we're going home. Like, we're doing it. Oh, Dirty Gains! <laughs> like, that now. Dirty dude. Gains, man. Dude, like, if I do that shit now, Rob, I'll be 300 pounds Rob, tomorrow. But I can still I know, eat it. Rob, I know you're a hard gainer. Here's what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it worked. I didn't gain weight. I just kept getting more and more ripped doing whatever the fuck we were doing and eating whatever the hell we did. And I did I was, the cheesecake milkshake once and that was amazing. Ooh. I was so impressed with the fact that like, I remember getting there and being like, oh, hey, they have jalapeno poppers. Like, I'm going to take it light. I'm just only going to have a couple, like three jalapeno Six, poppers. Six, like, 12. Toned it down. I, you know, and uh, I don't think I'm a bad eater per se. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of in the back of my mind now. But when I think about a retrospect, I was like, I show up and I fucking eat whatever for the first week. And after the first, first week, I was like, <laughs> a bit, just gonna come back to about six jalapeno poppers every day. <laughs> and then by the end of it, it was just, I mean, like we got sloppy because every, every fucking day, Rob, you're like, cheesecake? Cheesecake. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> the, the day that I gave the cheesecake to the milkshake guy and the look on his face, <laughs> when I was like, cheesecake. And he's like, okay, cool. And I like took two steps to the side and I, I looked at the milkshake guy. I'm like, and he like dumped the cheesecake into the milkshake thing. I was like, so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I just remember, was he the same guy as the dessert guy who was just, he yeah. literally, like he was the dessert Nazi. Like he literally yeah. was like, no, you can't. Yeah. No, you only get one. You, it's like, yeah, yeah. I want two slices of cake. No. Yeah. Or my, my biggest issue. And this is, this comes back to just an army thing as a whole. It's like, if, do you remember like probably halfway through the time we were there is when they came out with, you only get one meat. Yeah. Soldiers are eating too much protein. Yeah. It's yeah. like you could have all the fucking pasta and shit you want in the crap, but yeah. God forbid you have more than one meat at dinner. The no, clogging the shitters. Yeah, yeah. God, like or the uh, they, remember that there was the locker that had all the supplements of people that were leaving, and yeah. one had like <laughs> one had like one had masking tape on it, and it just said protein. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. That's hilarious. oh my god! I that's was like, funny. hmm, but this is going in the trash. I mean, that's a good transition from trash. yesterday. Mm-hmm. Right, because I yeah I eventually figured out that I think all supplements are bullshit. Yeah, I mean like caffeine and creatine. Like uh, you can what, say creatine uh, is the most well documented and studied. It is, but ever. what does it really do for you versus someone who doesn't take it and does the same shit? Oh. Is there any? Is there any real like what is 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 Tim gonna do one more rep? That pump no. Tim's gonna yeah that pump though, but Tim's <laughs> still gonna be inhibited or limited or. I don't know what the word is. He's still going to do what he can do better than me because he's just a fucking better athlete. Yeah, well, I creatine mean, ain't going to help me. Make, I'm not going to be fucking Tim just because I take some fucking creatine. That's that's different. You're it's not going to be Tim just because no, you don't weigh 225 pounds. I bet you I could. <laughs> <laughs> not like that. Not I can like weigh 225 and still not do what Tim does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'd look, rather spend caffeine, my money on bourbon these days. Just being honest, man. Caffeine, yeah, I, like I drink if, plenty of coffee. Don't get me wrong. If if you if you consume too much caffeine prior to meat, they like they can pop you on water. I'm like someone could back check me on that, but I believe caffeine in too significant well, we don't of amount. Here. You just accept what you know, we say. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> you could pop hot for having too much caffeine in your bloodstream. Like, I probably come would. on, man. You know, Eric. Um, I think about this a lot, right? You, you just joked about, I can be 225 and not this or that. And I was like, when I was a senior in college, I think I was about 285. Jesus and Christ. can you imagine God Tim at 285? Uh, I'd mm. rather not. I, I have some I, pictures. Of it, like You're still chiseled though. You still got the chiseled face. I don't know uh, how you pull that I'm off. I'm doing a really good job hiding what's below my chest line. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with your face. <laughs> 
So you still, you still look but, good. <laughs> I thought it was before. I was like, uh, we we did uh, we did a heavy back squat. I don't know. Like I probably have. I, I think we did a back squat the other day, and it was probably it was supposed to be like sets of five at seventy percent, right? And and I have not since I've been mostly working at home. Right, I had surgery last October. And I just have been mostly working at home because I couldn't pull. I had like carpal tunnel, cubicle tunnel, all that. And I haven't pushed myself and I just been working out here. And the most weight I have here is like 370 or something. I don't know what yeah. I have, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think it was 370. I think you said that. Most yeah. I did a workout the other day and it was, you know, I, I did maybe four and a quarter. And I and it was only for sets of four or five. And it was like, that was, that was really brutal. And I thought back when I was in college and I was close to 280, I was doing 495 for 10. Good God. I mean, yes, I was younger, clearly. I was like 19, 20 years old, right? But it was like, it felt so different. You yeah. know what I mean? But it just, have you have you always just been stronger than everybody, Tim? Uh, I mean, because no. you are. <laughs> you know I mean, no, I'm just saying, because like I, I squat, I started after, squatting late backs. in my life. Like I didn't do football no. like Tim, right? We didn't really do, but the most I've ever squatted in my life is 335 pounds. That's my one rep max. Yeah. Same. You're talking about like, I still watch you log <laughs> shit and I know you don't train it. You just go do it when you feel like doing it. And there's like a base level of strength that you just have that dudes are going to train their entire lives and never be able to deadlift 575 or never be yeah. able to do but, but, you know, I mean, like the shit you do. I still remember this, Rob, do you remember him warming up on front squats? It took him like three sets to be at four Oh five. And I'm just like, yeah. that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It like, cause that's uh, like John a Northen deadlift him, for John most Northen people. Him, John yeah. Northen called him shankle jumps. He'd be like 135, 225, 315. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what the, like, that doesn't even make sense. But that's like normal and a warm up. So clear, that's why I was just wondering if like you were always just the fucking strong kid. I mean, you weren't tall, you, but you were fucking strong as fuck. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there. You're making it sound unfair, frankly. Like I had, so when I was growing up, right? I mean, I was a bigger kid. Like I joke about this, but I was rough. Not unfair. <laughs> I, was, uh, I think the the number I remember was like two oh five in fifth grade. I, I don't I don't remember a whole lot. You weighed two oh five in fifth grade. Can I finish? Sure. <laughs> it wasn't like a fucking good two oh five. I mean, I guarantee you that, right? <laughs> I played football and and through by the time I was a freshman, I think um, I had I really didn't ever embrace working out like I, I really didn't until I got to high school. So I was just big. Yeah, great. Right. Um, I started it was probably my sophomore year or something like that. Excuse me. I started powerlifting. I had a really good coach, Dave Hoagland, who um like I didn't, I had no idea concept powerlifting, right? It was just like, hey, it was just work and, and it was just having targets, you know, like most high schoolers, I mean, you got weightlifting classes and whatever it is. And you think, oh, if I can get stronger for this sport or that sport, but it was always like, you were, you were not chasing a number and he was a really good coach this way. It was just, it was sort of, uh, I don't want to say it this way. It wasn't like like an Arnold chasing the pump, but it was just chasing the next PR or that like yeah. feeling you hit a lift and it was like fucking next level. You're like, Oh God, like that was terrible, but it felt solid. And he's like, yeah, that's what I'm fucking talking about. And like, I, I think it was my junior year. I went to like a state powerlifting meet and I swear to God, like, I feel like the most I'd ever squat up till that point was uh, maybe like four thirty or something like that. You know, I mean, this is wraps singlet, belt all that right and we're warming up and he gets me to put like 405 on the bar and he's like and this dude was like six five three hundred pounds right or whatever he's fucking gigantic and he goes do a pull squat <laughs> and i'm just like what are you talking about like every day he's like just shut up and do it you know he was <laughs> like he was the big damn animal to me like i love this guy right but so i do a pause squat with 405 and it was like oh like i don't know if he says that i can do it apparently so and, you know, it, it was the matter of like just having faith in what you could do, but shooting for a target. So no, it's like, I was just always strong. I had good people around me and, you know, I mean, like, frankly, I feel like if I was, if it were today and I were a kid, like, I don't know how I would as a parent handle it. Right. Because my parents were just like, I'm sure like behind yeah, closed doors. Next question. It's like, it was, 
strength so probably like, was Jesus in your family Christ. or what? Can we feed him less? Like he's getting so fucking fat. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's that's a that's the uh, microscope of parenting nowadays. Yeah, I mean, but you know what I'm saying like, is like, you know, they, they stop me and like I come home from practice or whatever, and I drink like a fucking three quarters of a gallon of milk just to, before I was even. Wait, was your dad an athlete or? He was no, my old man actually Olympic lifted when he was in uh, high school. Uh, he didn't really play much sports, and he went to the air force. Yeah, so uh, that that. 300 pound snatch like probably missed out on that one well i know he could snatch 300 i was talking about 400 <laughs> i know he could snatch 400 he could snatch 400 i mean the whole, the whole point is like no i'm not <laughs> the Just, point is you I, have genetic strength whether you believe it or not now i know you did hard work genes, i'm bro. not saying i'm not saying you didn't do the hard work to get there but it doesn't matter there's still plenty of people who've done a lot of hard work and they're never going to lift as much as you've done. But that's, that's not jeans. a knock on you, Tim. It's just something that you know, you've, you're fortunate to have. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having some strength wrong. gifts. I don't, I don't doubt that. I guess my, my whole point is it's not like I showed up one day the way you like. There were dudes. Okay. Uh, we had a guy who was running back. Went, he played at uh, uh, Minnesota. He was a golden goal for it. Demetrius Johnson. Fantastic athlete, right? Uh, he didn't work out. Like he would, we would go in the weight room and he would just fucking go talk and bullshit. And then he'd hop onto the bar and squat like 330, you know? Skinny little black dude. He was probably, he probably weighed one, maybe 170, you know? And he would just throw up two times body weight. He would do like two, three, four reps, whatever. Fine. He just, he didn't like, there's, there's that side of it. And yes, again, yeah. my genetics made me bigger. Right. Yeah. Make- but it's beyond that, Tim, because I think, we we get like you are naturally gifted as a strength athlete but i think the thing that the understanding of even trying to train as a competitive crossfit athlete and then seeing what you do on the other side of things like naturally gifted as a strength athlete but i bet you skinny tim butterfly 50 straight (laughs) right like butterfly 50 straight that's another that's another thing people can't fucking do right and like you (laughs) we were we were messing like back in the day we were messing around with like deficit deficit handstand push-ups yeah and and tim would like oh let me try and like knock out five or ten like straight off the bat i mean it was it was not just that but actually if i remember correctly the strict handstand push-up was tim's kryptonite it, it, exactly. it was, but at the same time, it was the time, only like, thing I could do good. But I can't. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like, I can do four to five. You want to do a workout? Mm-hmm. Like, cool. Like, what do you want to do? Yeah. I am. Tim, Tim can strict press like his body weight, but you know, strict handstand push up, not having yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, it, that was the thing that that was the thing that always impressed me about Tim was his ability to take because my. I could always do this, the high skill things, right? Yeah. Like I picked up double unders and gymnastics and things like that. But Tim could go from deadlifting 500 pounds to doing muscle ups and doing double unders and then like rowing 5,000, you know, in a stupid time. Like that is what that, I think that was my first personal experience with someone where I was like, this dude's really good at CrossFit. Well, that's the, that's the whole, you know, well-rounded thing, right? You got to be, yeah. be good at everything. Okay. Are we not going to talk about King Kong? Or? Yeah, no, I was just about to bring oh, that yeah. up. So, yeah, let's talk about King Kong. So, for those who don't know, King Kong is a uh, – it's, it's really random. If you think about the, the origin and how it came about in CrossFit. So, it is a CrossFit workout. Is it, is it three rounds? Yeah. Yeah, it's three. Three yeah. rounds of one deadlift at 455. Yeah two muscle ups right or no yeah. two yeah. squat cleans at no two muscle ups two muscle ups two, three, two muscle ups three, three squat cleans, cleans at 245 right 250 250 yeah it's a random no, it's number 250, 250 on the dot yeah, yeah. exactly it's just a stupid number 250 and then four handstand push-ups three rounds right now strict. strict handstand push-ups now this workout was done with myself rob and travis against tim we had to Rob and I as a yeah. team. <laughs> Rob and I did tandem dub deadlifts. Rob did the muscle ups. Travis did the cleans because he was the only one strong enough to do it. And then I did the hands to strict handstand pushups because, again, like I said, the only thing I can fucking do good. And then Tim went against us, and we had Lindsay as we were recording it stand in front of half the fucking workout. The point yeah. is, 
You were down to the gym. Go to the we weren't even close, dude. Tim won. We weren't even close. No, it wasn't. I, I thought I, I put some distance in between us on the first round of the handstand push-ups, but yeah. the cleans is where it fell apart. Like Travis yeah. could do them, but he just can't do as many as Tim. I was going to say, like, <laughs> we, so stop and think about this. Uh, yeah, that was slow, right? But Travis was doing like a 97 97- percent of his one rep max exactly yeah <laughs> yeah he was like, that was really pretty travis cool. actually had good technique the opposite of me it was great yeah. travis i'm yeah. um, like literally travis was like yeah 95 97 percent of his one rep max for his clean and jerk and of you it. know tim's moving it like he's power cleaning like oh <laughs> i have to squat <laughs> i remember getting really nervous because the first first round First round of deadlifts, you guys did the, or not the deadlift, you did the deadlift and we hopped up on the rings. Maybe it was the second round. And you did like the first muscle up and you're like, oh my God, my back crashed. I just heard you yell up. <laughs> what was the set of rings next to you? And yeah. I, freaked out. I was like, oh, Rob's hurt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, like I did, I did like, I had this, you know, flying a helicopter is not good for your back. And I, I remember like, like driving a truck, er, er, right? Not good. Er, every couple of times, like I would, I would do like a, a butterfly chest to bar or a toes to bar or something, or like a muscle up. And as I hit the bottom, I would like turn out and I would hear my whole back go like, pop, 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 pop. I'm like, hmm. That's cool. See, if you're like me, you've never done more than one muscle up. So it's fine. You've got more, dude. <laughs> I'm ne- such the a only thing I've ever done. It's a I- mental block now. Probably. Well, you- but the most bar muscle ups I've ever done without breaking is three. I just don't even do them anymore. I could probably get you one right now, but it's a flexibility thing. I just Tim gets by. Remember that workout? It was like it was like the 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 power snatch and the bar muscle ups, and Tim was like top twenty in the fucking region. (laughs) On that one, yeah, yeah. Well, that That was was the one workout. I was like, this makes no fucking sense. I get it. The snatch is so light for him. But like, how is this dude at 240 or whatever he was at the time just doing this high skill gymnastic movement? Like it means nothing. Butterflying. (laughs) Like he was, he was doing those bar muscle ups like a hummingbird. He was like, I know it was just pure fucking strength. Stop. Stop. That was after you taught me how to do them. Right. Because that was, that was the opening. I beat Chandler Smith the one time. You did. One time. You did. But you taught me how. Do you remember what that used to look like before you got me to do it? No, yeah, I remember you. Used to I would kip and I would literally like, shake the whole fucking rig. It was yeah. an infinity rig. That's a like hip power like, right there. Long, and the whole thing. Would <laughs> Why haven't you tried out like, for like the the fucking like army cross? Thirty foot. Why don't you go do that like shit. Thirty foot rig, and this dude does one bar muscle up, and the whole rig's like, oh my god. Well, I mean, to be ball. fair, that was a poorly secured rig. If we're gonna be honest, it kind of was. It had, it, but it was, it was, how many, how, that rig was long. It was long. Rig yeah, was like it was, six, dude, it was really yeah, long. It was, it was, they, they had, I think there was at least 10 stations on each side. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember cool. though, like, cause we were in the middle of it and you were like, just do this side and the other. And I would go, and I'm just slam my chest into the bar from below. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, no, no, not like that. Not like that at all. <laughs> not like that at all. I, I think I remember coaching you through that and I was like, Tim, uh, don't I remember break the rig. You told me the first time you were like, just do this and then do that. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Bam, just chest into the bar. And you're like, no, not try it again. Well, I was, then- yeah, I would, I would talk to people. So I would talk to people about bar muscle ups is like moving. You're know, like, you have to, you have to pull from in front of the bar to get your center of gravity over, you know? And that's what like, that's why the, the glide kip was such a big thing. And, you know, like a little bit of forward momentum, getting your, your center gravity in well, front of the bar before you pull, gets you to pull your The only thing that ever made sense it. for me to be able to do it was when someone, and I think it was at CrossFit Mayhem, it might have been Darren or, or the other guy, I can't freaking remember his name, but I just remember one of them saying, you have to pull your hips to the bar and then just yeah. do a sit up. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone like, and it never made sense to me. Cause I like, I, you I, all the fucking what's rich doing workouts always had high volume bar muscles in it. And I always had to yeah. do them with a fucking like a band or something, but I remember getting to mayhem and someone just saying, it's not a strength or a technique that just pull your fucking hips to the bar. And I would, and I finally did that. And that was the same workout I was talking about Tim. That was that year. The, <clears throat> yeah, it was so weird because it like it magically clicked, but for whatever reason I was naval, I never could string more than two or three together at a time can do it 
I remember that. You know what? Now I don't care. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Don't care? Because I'm not going to the games. You don't know that. Oh, I know. I know that. (laughs) Oh, I know. Because my my gym owner is a 45 year old who's also the chief of the fire department, and that guy's like legit. Like he's skinny Tim right now. Like that dude's 45 years old, That's fucking scary. shredded. That's scary, man. Shredded. And he's still That's like, scary. man, I'm on the cusp. And he's just like, he just aged up in the 45 and he's got a shot. He's probably, I don't know. I, I would never count him out, but I the work out with there, that man. dude every day almost. And it's just like, not even close. I, mean, I am, I am massive. Not even fucking man. close, man. Dude, the numbers are there. If you don't, if you don't make it to whatever level in your first two years as a master's athlete, you're not going to do it. Yeah, because everyone's always aging up. But I mean, he's made yeah. granite games. He's done a lot of like the the NorCal Masters and shit. Like he's like he's a great athlete. Don't get me wrong. He's like he's like I said, he's like Tim. But that dude's my height, and he probably weighs one ninety. Like he's shredded. So, yeah. You know what I mean? He's five years older than me, and he's shredded. And I'm you know this shirt that used to fit me is too tight. Whatever. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with a baby gap shirt. It sure ain't. All right, real quick, who's gonna win? The CrossFit Games now that Fraser's retired. Rob, is Olsen going to do it finally, or is it going to be that new kid? Uh, I got to look him up. I forgot his name. You're talking about so, mullet kid? Yeah, the mullet so, kid. He got my dark, so, first of all, my dark horse to podium is Chandler Smith. I don't even care about podium. I really don't. Oh, I, I love Chandler uh, Smith. I want Chandler Smith to win, but I don't give a shit if you come I, in third I or second. I really don't. Him. I think he's going to podium. I think the, the – if, what did he miss it by one spot this year? Yeah, yeah. Podium? Yeah. No, making yeah. it. No, he was making it to the games. Yeah. I think if Noah Olson doesn't do Noah Olson things, he's going to win it. <laughs> I was disappointed with Noah's performance this year, especially after what he came off of, where he actually was in contention on the final day for a change, and Fraser was like, "All right, you know what? Fine, I guess I'll just fucking go win." <laughs> he's always had like one mental error. You know, he's yeah, always had like that was a, the year a he bad did event, or like you know, and and like he he can he he has everything that he needs to win. He just needs to put it together. That's yeah. an interesting case study, right? We talked about this before about like how dedicated you are, stuff like that. Like, what's he doing that, or what's he not doing that others are or were? I mean, what about? I mean, at a certain level, like I, I guess Justin Medeiros is that guy's name. Yeah, that's what I fucking said. Mullet guy, Medeiros. Yeah, the mullet guy. Dude, he's 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 awesome. He he's young. Show, he's man. young, and, and you, know what, you know what my problem with him is? He's not strong. He's he's very What's gifted. Because yeah. what did he do in the CrossFit total? His his strict yeah. press was one seventy two. I can do yeah. that for reps, and that's a problem because I shouldn't be stronger than a guy who should win the CrossFit games. Are you serious? 172? Yeah, he, that yeah. was his weakness. He, he came in wow. last in that event, but that was his weakness. His strict press was, was 172. Was I, think that's a, I think that's an example, that? a classic example of someone who's great at CrossFit, but who yes. probably won't well, win the never, I games. guarantee he's never done a strength program in his life, and he's 22 years old, and he's just naturally gifted. What were you saying, Tim? No, I was going to ask, what was the squat and deadlift from the total? I will get you on that. Hang on. Uh, I would love to talk amongst like, yourselves, please. Like, I think he was middle of the pack, though. Like, yeah, he yeah, was. He, was. Of, he yeah. I don't remember what. I, I, I think that's a, a classic example. Like, you put him in the open. You put him in most CrossFit workouts. Like, he's going to finish ninety nine and a half percentile. Like, so he's going to destroy everybody. But so hang on. So his yeah. one rep max front squat during the qualifier was four thirty seven. So he's got a good squat, right? Um, at the CrossFit total, he came in last at the games, and it was primarily yeah. because. Now I will get you what his actual event scores were, but it was because wow. I know for a fact his fucking uh, strict press was 172 pounds, and I remember watching it like I shouldn't be stronger than you, bro. No matter what I weigh, I just shouldn't. You know what I mean? I just shouldn't. Tim, you should have tapped in for him. That's awkward. Yeah, Tim, that would have been your event, bro. You know, yeah, man. <laughs> you if I can, you if I can finish top three. So what was I, weird like- about that is like Fraser still came in second. You know what I mean? Because I think strong, Samuel, I think Quant won it. Or Quant, yeah, yeah. Quant, but Fraser still came in second. Like that's like the thing that a guy who's five six isn't going to win still comes in second. You know, and that's the fucking problem. Like but that's just how great of an individual or how well rounded Fraser was at that point. The numbers weren't even insane. Neither were Quants, right? I mean, they didn't. Uh, well, they were both they were, they were both over twelve hundred because Medeiros came well, eleven hundred ninety two pounds was Medeiros, and he came in last. Yeah, that's 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 impressive. Yeah, 
That's that's impressive. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm what, gonna get it. But what? Gonna... But what would have been great is seeing Tim walk out on the field, <laughs> like just win one event. That's all you got. Like do. push some dude out of the way and be like, "I will take you your." Realize, I mean, the, the guys were talking about like who were um, oh god, who were the other big dumb animals inside Kalipa? Like there used to be a whole lot more big dumb animals. Uh, um, oh, I can't even think of their names now. It's so disappointing, but. Tim, um, can you can, hold on before you do it? Can you do this event? Because I want to know how you would do an event one of the games. It was a fifteen hundred meter row, and then five rounds of ten bar muscle ups and seven shoulder to overhead with two thirty five. Because that's where Olson couldn't do it anymore after on round five. Like he literally couldn't do the overheads. Two thirty, two thirty five. You would crush that. How many? How many? How many that. Five rounds, ten bar oh. muscle ups, seven shoulder to overhead. If you would have broke I up can't, the bar I can't, muscle ups. I can't, I cannot do one round of that. Like, that's where this I'm is, at. This is like, yeah. If, if, no, no, no. No, 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 no. If you would have broken up the bar muscle ups, you would have you would have probably done really well because you would have made up time on the row and the sh the, the shoulder to overhead. Yeah, three, three, two, two. But still, I mean, the fact that I'm going to have to break it up into three, three, two, two because I'm a fat ass. It's not helping overall. <laughs> no, right, so here no, we go. but no, you're, you're not going to win it. But you're, you, I, I guarantee you, you would have done well in that workout because you would have been able to finish in a decent time. All right, here's here's the other thing. So here's the other thing. I was so Medeiros hit a 480 squat back squat, but he only deadlifted 437. Wait, what? Awkward. It says you're telling me he wait, hold back on. squats more than he deadlifts. Medeiros lifted 175 in the press, 437 yeah. on his second lift. Miss, yeah, because he missed his last deadlift. 437 was the highest he got, and he did a 480 back squat. Yeah, that's so backwards. That's weird. It is. My boy BDA is deadlifting over five bills. We already know and that. Like he he can and, only do 575 because that's all the weight he can get on the bar. <laughs> like squatting and squatting Tim, what's the most what's bills? the most you ever deadlifted tim i think i inadvertently did what um in a competition if you're trying to think i did 600 605 but i think when we did uh there was a like a partner competition at Air john i did with uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what our name was. Angel Hair. That was our name. Angel <laughs> Hair. The team Angel you know Hair. What? <laughs> you know what I would love to see Tim train for is the super total. There was what's there that? Was Wait, hold on. Man, I did 625. 625. But I haven't I haven't powerlifted in all the money. I, I would love to see you train. I would love to see your numbers for a super total. What's the super, super total? total? Super total is a three, three big lift, squat bench deadlift, but you also do snatch and clean and jerk. Is it a bench or is it a strict press? It's a bench. Because I think the bench is the dumbest thing ever. It's for men. Yeah, I mean, it has no function. Yeah, bench is it is. Yeah, yeah it is. But I, I would, would still love to see your super total. I I could give you an idea what it would be. So, Tim, you would like this before you figure that out. When I was at Camp Redleg for a site visit, it was – primarily American oh, yeah. uh, air defense, but it was also shared with an Australian unit. I can't remember what the fuck they did, but they had obviously the thousand pound club, but they also had the 1500 pound club. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And there was like three dudes that were in it and they were all at like 1600 or some stupid shit. And I just remember looking at that. I'm like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Now I've gotten into the thousand pound club, but Come on, 1,500? Like averaging 500 on three lifts? That's fucking ridiculous. Well. Now you could uh, probably do it because you got a 625 deadlift, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can do it. Like when I was in you high can, school. You I, can do I had, it. So if I take the best of everything I've ever done, yeah, sure, yeah. fine. In, in any given lift or any given uh, like a meet. Well, then according to the internet, you win. <laughs> well, the meets, I, was, I, mean, I get to think about this. When I was a senior high school, so I did 635 squat. I did. I, in high school, that's fucking stupid. I failed. That's so stupid. <laughs> it really is. I, I failed 550 deadlift because I hitched. So I think I hit. I don't, know if, I don't know if I jumped from 505 or 535. I think it was 535. So 635 and 535. And then I. <laughs> benched this is on high school so i think i 
sorry, whatever, this is gonna sound shitty. I think I benched 315, but it was like a the state pot for me. So whatever that is, that's 1170, 1113, that's just about 1400. So yeah, there. No, I mean, I wouldn't squat the same. It'd be like a ninety days. Tim's five. breaking fifteen hundred pounds. <laughs> I think you probably it makes it right better. What I, so you talked shit about that deadlift the other day, right? So it was just a come in and deadlift a bunch and then do that. Like what was the wad? It was like do three ten minute am wrap of three, three deadlifts and what run two hundred? Huh? Are you are was you guys two hundred or run right now? What what program well, I, are you guys on right now? Them, I told I you I, I do whatever pops in my head, Rob. That's literally what I do. I come I up with my own up. shit at this point. I've done enough shit over the five six years. I've done I I I know exactly what I need to do and what I want to do. It's not hard. If I, I, if I refuse I to follow peak, programming, I peek at linchpin. Just because I like. I can't do anything linchpin says anymore. So I just. <laughs> sure, Sherwood's got a great man. I did I did linchpin. Yeah, Sherwood's for, great. Like, I love him. I did it for like four months last year uh as i was trying to deal with traveling and working out and so he 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 does a great job man he i does think a great job I, uh, I i think of really terrible things like really fucked yeah. up yeah and then i go that's fucked up and i'll think of something slightly less terrible and somehow i'm like yeah okay pretty much everything i do now no longer it, it no longer encompasses gymnastic skills like I don't even do strict <laughs> handstand push-ups like I used to. Like I used to have a strict handstand push-up workout every probably every other day. I don't even do those anymore. I can yeah. still do them. Not, I just don't. I'm not even doing crossfit right now. Yeah, I just I just I'm, I'm I not just even go work low, out. Low, low, low. I just go work yeah. out. <clears throat> Sometimes yeah. I'll do what the gym is doing, but lately I think they follow NorCal, and yeah. a lot of the stuff they do lately just is it's not very interesting. It's kind of stupid, and boring. Uh, like they had a workout the other day. It was like. 10 minute am wrap of 200 meter run and 25 air squats i was like yeah. no i'm gonna go run on my own and do some I, leg tucks because you know the army's gonna melt down over a fucking leg tuck we didn't even get to that are there no. not you can stick to crossfit so i did that stuff yeah. <laughs> i get i was like i'm gonna it's really nice outside i want to go listen to music and run my fat yeah. ass ran six miles i saw that and then i went and ran five i was like fuck <laughs> Tim running six. This is I haven't. Rob, run you got to get back on this miles. app because you can look at this shit. You need to get back on the app, bro. Yeah, I want to follow. I do. Not one. I do. I do. Yeah. I do. I do need to get back on the app. Uh, yeah, I saw Tim, oh, and then Tim did some dumb shit the other day where he ran up a hill a lot, like a bunch of times with a vest on. I'm like, what the? F Who we, does that dumb shit? We. we uh, yeah. So Tim. I have a group of fellas that I get together with that we run, and we all have like. 511 vests and stupid shit and uh when it snowed here like a month ago now um for the first time we were like well what are we gonna do like the park's all fucked up and this and that because we go rocking and we go running and we're like i i said one day i was like you guys ever run a parking garage and they were like no <laughs> yeah we yeah, I see ain't that some Tim shit? That. Ain't that some Tim shit right there? Yeah. You're like, hmm, I've seen him uh, put down ran the parking garage levels. I'm like, who? <laughs> let me let me think nah. of some really horrible crap that would make me throw That's up. That's what I'm talking I'm about, right? Write so, it down. Sure. You saw this uh, probably like a uh, three weeks ago, maybe something like that. I did. Uh, it was like a hundred burpees. Like we did that shit in every time, right? But yeah. like five years removed, I don't do that because the thing was, I was like, well, maybe I should do uh, like. I forget what was worse than that, that I somehow talked myself back down to doing a hundred burpees or a hundred, hundred busters for time. Oh, every time you drop the bar, do five burpees. That's that. That's Cal Cal yeah. Cal Cal yeah. With 135 pounds, which I'll never yeah. be able to do. Which I, but there was something worse that I thought of prior to that, that I talked myself <laughs> down from <laughs> to doing a hundred thrusters and somehow that was like yeah that's totally manageable like hundred <laughs> thrusters is manageable <laughs> you douche I, I, you're not the only one like people look at my so what's funny is i do stuff and then i swear to god my box was like looking at my account because like a few days later they would do some shit like a week and a half ago i did uh hollyman or i i did yeah, i, can't I saw do the hollyman i love hollyman do. man rob can do it i still can't because i can't power clean 225 Hollyman's Hollyman's my standard, man. Like I know I'm out of shape when I can't do Hollyman. I did that, but instead of wall balls, I did uh, Rocal. 
because those are the house. And I did it in the wrong order. I did one, I did one three five instead of five three one. Okay. This was like a yeah. Saturday or Sunday, and like that yeah, fucking yeah, Wednesday, I go into the box and they're like, we're doing Holly Man. I'm like, who the fuck is watching my account? Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. a great workout, man. That's a great workout. I might it's, do it's that fantastic. this week. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. No, maybe I'll do it Thursday. No, maybe I'll do it Friday with 185. I can't do it 225. Can't maybe do I'll do it next. 30, yeah, 30, 30 power cleans at 225. Actually, like, what is it? I don't it's know if five, I can. Do it's five wall balls, three what? It's okay. one power clean. Yeah, no. three handstand yeah. push ups, five wall balls. I can, five, three, one. I can do that in the garage then. I got yeah. a wall ball. Yeah, I'll do it 185. Yeah. I can't do it with two. I'll do. I'll do it when I get back to the house this weekend. All right. So real quick, who's winning? I know we we started speaking about it. I got to get out of here. I got to go grill a steak. I'm fucking starving. I'm gonna put money on Noah Olson. You gotta I'm put money on Noah Olson. Put money on Olson. I'm taking that bet. All right, Tim. Who you got? I don't know. I kind of feel like Ben Smith might show back up again. Damn. Out of the blue, dark horse. Here. Pause. No one's paying attention. Yeah, no that's true. He's still young enough, right? Ever since he that got was rid weird. Of the he started when he was 18. I mean, he's still young. Just saying. I'm just curious about how that team thing's going to go since Scott Panchek went back to individual. And now I looked at Rich's team and I don't know who any of those fucking people are. Dude, Ooh, uh, his team is stacked. Yeah, I guess. Look at the look at the individual athletes and look at their team finishes. No, I it's know. Stacked. I saw that. I saw one of the girls was like top 10 the last time in the games. It's and- stacked. I'm There's, having a brief part. Uh, Rob, who, you, you used to be a fanboy. Um, <laughs> surprised? It's a, it's a great way to start a conversation. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know why I cannot think of his name. Um, I just remember we were talking about like brill lifting, and he did a one on his boat where he did bench and med ball. Oh, man, that's Dan, Dan Bailey, dude. Bailey. Oh, my gosh. The original bench and air ball. clanging air, bench. Air, 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 what was it? Uh, no, the, uh, the wall ball fucking – Squat cleans. Right? No, he did med ball. It was med, med ball, ball cleans and bench. Yeah, med ball cleans and bench. Yeah. I've done that. I've done on that. His, on his it boat. Sucks. Did he? Did he retire or what? I, don't I, don't know. I remember at one point. I remember at one point Castro approached him about being the workout tester, and I think he declined it. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's he's been injured too much to come back. I feel like the last time he had to go was when he hurt his chest, the regional. And that was kind yeah. of it. He's always, I think yeah. he's always been like two or three years older than Froning. So he's Froning's like 32, 33. So he's, he's like your age, Tim. He's, he's not young enough. To go. So. Yeah. Okay. He's like 36. He's not young enough to be competitive anymore. There's just, he has to go into masters and he doesn't want to do it. I, well, there's no I mean, attention. Yeah. Like it's a nice gesture, but like the masters and teens thing is kind of corny in my opinion. Well, like, I was like, Remember just Bill Grundler? Like have it at like a sectional, but at the games, like who gives a fuck who the fittest eighty year old is? Like I don't fucking care. Hey, I think they should have a Clydesdale division. <laughs> no. no, remember, remember, two, remember Bill Grundler up. refused. Remember Bill Grundler refused to compete as a Masters athlete. Remember yeah, that because he was like, right. I'm either making it or I'm not. Yeah, like yeah. Bailey and Spieler said the same shit. They're like, no, yeah. I mean, if I can't make it as an individual, what's because seriously, what's yeah. the point? There's no attention. There's no TV. There's why. There's no money in it. You're going to sacrifice yourself for what? 10 grand. No, yeah. I'm good, man. All right, boys. Uh, we could probably talk all night, uh, but we're not because it's already been two hours and 15 minutes. And, you know, I, I look at the analytics. Most people ain't making it this far, bros. <laughs> we will. All right. We will. Especially with uh, this crowd. They're not tuning in for this. All right. I, I, uh, yeah. So uh, thanks for coming on. We'll have to do this again. We'll actually do a game train three in person and maybe we can actually record it now that especially out here if you guys ever show up lord newsome has said that we can move back into the red tier that means we get to go inside i don't know how Whatever, it is man oh, don't come out to yeah. atlanta don't come out to atlanta it's freaking, yeah, we'll, we'll it's, it, it hasn't been closed down since <laughs> yeah i just it, it, it's funny but anyway we need to do this we need to get some uh some stuff on the bar hopefully nothing technical i know we come up with workouts but if you guys could limit the uh gymnastics movements that would be great because those are, uh, yeah, Dead. those are in my past. But anyway, Rob, Tim, thanks. That was great. Well, I know it was great. It's because it was us. So I miss you guys. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Tim. All right, hang on. Let me. Uh,